Hi, everyone. There's a new Ninja Turtles movie out in theaters right now. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And now that it's out, I decided, hey, let's go back and look at all the other theatrically released films and decide which one's the worst one today on Hack the Movies. It's time to Hack the Movies. That title is a mouthful. <laughs> TMNT Mutant Mayhem is a long <laughs> title. Yes, hello, Kevin from Peg Warmers. How are you? How's it going, Tony? It's good to be back in the video store. It's going great. Um, now, people are probably like, Tony, why are you so negative? Why are you saying what is the worst one? It's like, well, if we did best, I mean, it's pretty. It's yeah, there'd like be a, no, there'd be. I already, <laughs> have no full discussion. Episode, I already have a full episode on it. I, do you want to watch an hour and a half of us going, yeah, it's this one. Literally, the first one is the best one. Um, I'm sure some people would disagree. I don't know why. I mean, maybe <laughs> just on pure nostalgia if they grew up with a different one, but. I guess so. I guess so. But yeah, not that they're all bad. I feel like most of the Turtles movies are enjoyable. Now, what is your experience with Turtles? I'll repeat what mine is, but what is your experience? So I found out about Ninja Turtles shortly after they hit the airwaves as the cartoon show. Okay. Didn't see the cartoon because mm -hmm. we I lived in like the middle of nowhere and didn't get a lot of channels. But other kids at school would tell me about Ninja Turtles. Okay. So I asked for Turtles toys for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Was very confused which one was which. And then I saw the cartoon eventually and the 1990 movie in the theater. Cool, cool. And then I've pretty much seen almost all of these in the theater since. Mm. So you're a big fan of Turtles. I love the Ninja Turtles, yeah. Have, have you gone back and read the comics? Or did you go that deep into I, the lore? I have read a little bit, not, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of well, issues, But I've gone yeah. back and read, like, that original couple of arcs. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Um, yeah, so with me, I've always talked about it. Like, I, when I was born, the Turtles were already there. Yep. I had a giant stuffed Raphael, and then I had a smaller plastic one, which I think I have somewhere. Um, I enjoy Turtles. I miss the initial craze of it. Right. Because, again, my the big thing when I was a kid, the big new thing, because, like, Batman's been around forever, was, was Power Rangers. Right, that was, like, right. the big thing for me. So I did like the Turtles. I really liked Shredder. Okay. Similar with Transformers. I liked the bad guy more. Um, but yeah, I could never get too into it. And also famously, my first exposure outside of the toys was the coming out of their shells tour. I was all that live as a kid. I loved coming out of their shells. Are you in the, are you in the video? I'm not, I wasn't Ugh. at that, at that recording. Uh, but I, if you were in that recording in that stadium, you would have had to have bragged about it for the rest of your life. I would be bragging about it for the rest of your life. <laughs> no, I got nose. My parents bought us nosebleed seats, uh, and Look, it was like the greatest Christmas present. Nothing wrong with nosebleed seats. I just bought them for WrestleMania. So there we'll see go. how that goes. I forgot that they put like a big thing on top of the ring. And I'm like, oh, I hope that doesn't block my view. Um, yeah. So that was like my first exposure to what they were. And I remember just being like, oh, well, that's something. It's an oh. unusual take <laughs> on the Ninja Turtles. Uh, but I did see the cartoon here and there. And I thought it was like, okay, it would like rerun or something. But I wasn't super into it until I saw the first movie okay. years later. And I was like, this is great. It looks kind of like the, the Burton Batman shot, kind of like at that yep. same time when that film stock has that gritty look. And I'm like, I wish Turtles was more like this. And I think I would enjoy it more. Everything I know from Turtles is like by osmosis and like Googling stuff. Like right. I didn't actually watch all the cartoons. But like I know who Bebop and Rocksteady are. I know who Krang is. I might be a little confused on their origins in different mediums, which I'm hoping you can help me with. And they certainly change that for almost all the characters, yes. every iteration of them. Like, yes. Let's just change it up. Well, I can't wait for the, uh, when we get to the, the reboots to talk about how like Splinter gets more and more confusing. Yeah. As the movies go on. And I'm starting to understand why the cartoon combined him with a human. Uh, because when you kind of eliminate that human element, uh, it just gets weirder. But anyway. So, yeah, Ninja Turtles 1, already talked about it. Kevin, can you read the back of the box for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze? This is a pretty fun movie, by the way. <laughs> I do have to say that. Those heroes in a half shell are back in an all-new movie adventure. 
find out the secret of the ooze as our fearsome foursome go after the glowing canister that has slipped into the hands of the evil Shredder and his mutant allies, Razar and Toka. Aided by their new pal, Kino, the turtles dive into action and pizza. Pizza's okay. Ha! <sighs> Powered by a hot soundtrack featuring Vanilla Ice's Ninja Rap. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, is sure to delight both kids and adults in this turtle-rific screen classic. Yes, now, this movie, I don't remember when I saw this. I think I, I, think I saw it pretty young. I might have seen them out of order now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, I... <sighs> I don't really care for this one. Um, so I have a lot of nostalgic memory for it. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. I know it's not as good as the first one, but it was a course correction in the kid marketing department. Yes. That's why I don't like it. Well, I, I agree. It's not as good because of that, yeah. but just from like the, I'm enjoying a popcorn like action movie. Mm -hmm. It's, it's funnier, like in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, and so like as a kid, I probably, actually watched Secret of the Ooze repeated more times just because it was more kid-centric. I can see that. They're there more often. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like how Return of the Jedi is like a more fun kid movie than kids, Empire yes. Strikes Back, yeah. but it's not a better movie. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I get that. Um, I do like Ernie Reyes Jr. I like that he was like one of the turtles in the previous one right. and they gave him like a bigger role. That was cool. Um, Well, one, it sucks that like, uh, what's his face is gone. Um... Hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone, which I thought was weird. And then they recast April, April. O'Neil, who apparently did not like the previous film. She had some issues with it, or at least that's what I read. And then basically they holster their weapons for the whole movie. That pissed me off the most. Yes, uh, I'm just like, well, what the hell? Why, like, have them fight like robots or something. That's how you get around it. Like, remember yeah. Wolverine in the cartoon? I don't think he ever stabbed a guy ever, even though that's what you want him to do. But he was right. like fighting robots and shit. You could uh, come up with something like that. Yeah, they have their weapons and they're not using it, which really, really bothered me. Apparently parents complained. They're they're in a bunch of situations where they're like, what do we do? Yeah. And they never grab their weapons off their back. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, that sword could probably help you, buddy. <laughs> but they have to keep them on there because they probably already made the toys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this one, I mean, you're right. It is goofier. Um, I guess it feels more like the cartoon, yeah. right? Because you have all the, like, the ooze. I know they changed the name. Uh, but you have ooze and you have other mutants. Now, I know they're not, they were made for the movie. Right. What is the deal with Toka and Razor? I don't know whether they didn't want to use characters if, like, New Line didn't want to have more characters that weren't owned by Eastman and Laird, like if there was additional royalties there. Yeah. Or they just felt like expanding the brand was a good idea. But it's not, I don't think it's what fans wanted at the time. Like, I think no. kids were really disappointed to not get to see Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. Now, keep in mind, I'm a kid who's not super into the Turtles lore. So I'm like, I don't, I didn't, I wasn't, I, like, I knew that there were mutants I probably wasn't aware like that they were Bebop and Rocksteady and they were in a bunch of episodes. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, yeah, they're fighting mutants. Cool. But for me as a kid, I'm like, oh, cool. Shredder lived. Yeah. I can't wait to see him again. He does nothing. He does absolutely nothing. This whole movie, he's just kind of standing around and it's like, can I get in there and fight some guys? They like, could have just done that movie without him. Yeah, because it's really kind of weird that he even exists. It's like, well, you were trash compacted, really. Yeah. And by the way, is this like month? How much? How much longer after the first movie is this? I mean, it seems like a little while. I mean, April's establishing a new apartment. Yeah. Do the turtles have a new den? I guess by this point. No, I think they they mentioned that they had to leave the den because the Foot Clan knows where they are. So right, they got why like, they're hanging out at April's. They got to come up with like a new den. Uh, but for me, I'm just like. Wait, so was Shredder just asleep for six months? Like, how was he alive? Maybe he was healing. If, if, <laughs> what? That makes no sense. I do like the detail that they just bent all the spikes on his suit. I'm like, okay, that's really funny. That it's just like, oh, he has the Shredder. Oh, we're just going to bend these a he, little he bit. He survived. It wasn't that bad. And it's the same actor, right? I believe so. Normally, you'd want them to come back and do more cool stuff. 
Or you do what the Batman movies were doing at that time. You just kill them off and get another character people knew. I think because they were trying to make it more like the cartoon, they wanted yeah. Shredder back because he, he was the big bad guy for most of the seasons. Yeah. And if you're not going to replace him with Krang. Yeah. Uh, in that era, like based off the cartoon, like who else do they bring in? There was nobody else that was kind of yeah. on par. So. so, yeah. So as a kid, I'm just like, well, Shredder's just kind of standing around. Be cool if he like did something. Yeah. And then toward the end of the movie, I'm like, oh, my God, he's super shredder now. And it's wrestler Kevin Nash. Mm -hmm. And he's gigantic. And you got the figure of yeah, him right this there. Is the figure of him. And he looks incredible. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And he kills himself on accident. Yeah. Like you, you barely get to see him like just long enough to go. That's amazing. Yeah. You want to see him like beat up the turtles. Yep. And then he like knocks out a pier. Which he should know that that's how that works. He's not, he is not a uh, snapping turtle. Also, it's weird. One of the mutants is just a different turtle. Yeah. And I know there is one in the comic. They're right. They're Slash, Slash, which is yeah. another weird choice of like, yeah. if we're going to make up some new, new mutants, make them very different from the ones that exist. Yeah. Instead of, what was it? Wolf and snapping yeah. turtle? The And that's the thing. The, the, the annoying thing is like Shredder, he's reduced to a comedic thing. Yeah. Where he's basically the mutant's I dad. I want babies. <laughs> There are babies. Uh, you, actually, his second in command comes back. I was just made him. Yeah, I was surprised. That he Would was you back. have been upset if the second in command went? I'm now Shredder and put on the outfit. That would have been fine. You wouldn't have cared that it was a different. I would have been fine with that yeah. too. I'm like, I am now the new Shredder. I would have been 100 percent okay with that. Yeah. Because again, I wasn't aware of like the comics and stuff and the Aro. What was his name? His real name? Um. Oroku Saki. Yeah, Oroku Saki. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. So as a kid, I would have been like, that's the new Shredder, obviously. Um, yeah, so that is really disappointing. How did you feel about Vanilla Ice? So as a kid, I didn't mind it. Yeah. It's it's super silly. It's yeah. super silly, but uh, it did make for a fun beat as a kid. Yeah. It's just it's just so much of the finale is built around that. <laughs> well, that, and that's one of the funny things. Like, it's this big, like, moment. Like, oh, here's the vanilla ice moment. And then it gets interrupted by Shredder. Yeah. And you're, like, expecting this big thing. And then it turns into, like, not, like they defeat Shredder yeah. in no time. Like, yeah. I, I, it's just, it's a weird wrap up there. It's so stupid. Um, Poor David Warner got roped into this as the scientist. Right. Who people said should have been Baxter Stockman. But like you said, it is funny how they got characters like it. Yes. And then just renamed. They which... just sort of, like, we, we've licensed the turtles in the original comic from... Yeah. Eastman and Laird. Which is actually kind of funny. And we don't deal with the royalties of everybody else. Because, like, the Batman movies do that sometimes. Yeah. Like, Eckhart in 89 is kind of flask mixed with Bullock. But even in The Dark Knight, there's that Latina cop and then that guy who are kind of like Bullock and right. Montoya. But you're right. They're they changed their names and their backstory just enough. Right. So, yeah, it's funny where you see, like, not Rocksteady, not Bebop, not Baxter Stockman. And I like David Warner. He was a really good actor. Um... Yeah, this this was not that I was expecting much, but yeah, if you go from the first one to this one, and you had the benefit of like seeing it as a young kid, a being young real kid. into it, yeah. I saw it like a little bit after I think, and just being like, this isn't as good as the other. This so isn't as good as the other. One of my bigger complaints about this movie because I like most of it. Yeah, um, the Jim Henson workshop did amazing work on the turtle suits for both movies. I yeah. think the suits are fantastic, but when you look at Toka and Razar, they look like Muppets. Yeah. They didn't put the same level of realism in them as they did with the turtles. Like, the turtles have turtle skin texture. Yeah. And Toka and Razar look yeah. like Muppets. And I know there's some stuff with the turtles, like, underneath their mask, the eye holes, I yeah. feel like, get a little bit bigger each movie. Uh, and I know you can see some of the mechanical stuff. But for the most part, like, even in this one, it's better in the first one. Even in this one, I'm like, I'm still buying that these are real. They they look fantastic, I sure, think. Sure, the mouth years. doesn't match up with the movements 100%, but you're so invested that you kind of, like, let it gloss over. Right. Uh, but you're right. Toka and Razar don't look they as just, good. And they're a surprisingly, goofy. Super Shredder looks really good. So the ooze makes your armor? That's where it gets really weird, right? It's one of those things where, like, in a cartoon, you wouldn't question it, but right. when it's live action, you're like, wait, now I'm thinking about it. That doesn't make any sense. He, um, he, his armor grows, and his body grows, yeah. but the suit doesn't rip. No. Yeah, it's real weird. <laughs> you can't think too much about that. 
But yeah, no, uh, like I said, mostly it's the Shredder that really upsets me. I think they completely wasted his character. And he could have done the whole, like, funny, like, the things, think it's his mom and whatnot. He could have still had those comedic elements as long as you balance it out with him kicking ass. Yeah. Or at least being menacing. He's not even, like, in the first one, he doesn't really fight that much. No. But he's very menacing the very whole menacing. time. And this one, he's just like, I'm really mad at those turtles. I'm going to make other mutants, I guess. And in a weird way, he becomes more like the cartoon Shredder. Like, yeah. in the cartoon, half the episodes, he's just whining to Krang about mm-hmm. how he doesn't want to live in Dimension X. Yeah. And that's kind of what they did with him. They turned yeah. him into this, like, whiny guy who's like, come on, make me mutants. Come on, yeah. beat the turtles. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> he doesn't do anything anything until mm-hmm. the super shredder part that's really the only part where he's like fine yeah. i'll do it myself and then does the worst job at it <laughs> you're uh, uh april o'neill april o'neill yeah the news lady i actually don't mind the new april o'neill i like the previous yeah, one i thought she was fine yeah i'm not the biggest in if you're expecting a rant later on about one of the movies i'm not the biggest april o'neill fan like i feel like some of these i'm like she's just kind of there because she has to be yeah. Because fans expect her to be there. But, like, the first one, there was, like, a purpose for her. And this one, she's like, I'm now friends with them, and they live at my place. I'm like, okay, well, we're really struggling for reasons for you to be involved in this plot. But they kind of work in it where she's investigating the ooze. But that gets kind of figured out really quick. They don't really explain the secret of the ooze, though. <sighs> like, they explain where the ooze comes from. Yes, and what it does. And but what like, it does, Why was it made? Of? Why was it made? Yeah. What was the, like, how were they going to profit from it? I mean. Is there more? Was there... That's a good question. Is there more? Well, I think there was something about the number of canisters, because they're looking through a computer at one point. Oh, uh, okay. And I think there's something about, like, destroyed, or, or like, mm. there's so, there is some moment there that makes you think that, like, this can so they're fighting yeah. over is really important. Yeah, here's a quick question. Yes. Um, uh, Donatello, is he the purple one? Mm-hmm. How's he typing? It's a great <laughs> question. It's a great question. You see him at the keyboard, I'm like... They have such large fingers. <laughs> like, his finger's the size of a fist. There's no way that makes any sense. Um, another issue I have is, like, I feel like the first part of the movie is really building up Kino. Right. And he's just kind of whatever the rest of the movie. I can't even remember. Like, I just watched this, and outside of the beginning, where he calls the girl fat, that was funny. He was like, I'll match someone thinner. Uh, he, I can't remember a lot of what he does. So he infiltrates the foot, right? He okay. tries to be a foot soldier. Right. He comes back. I feel like he disappears for a while and well, comes he, back to do he that. He kind of, like, goes off with Raph on a little side mission. Right. That's when he joins the foot to kind of find out what their plan is. Yeah. And he shows up all the ninjas there. Mm-hmm. Um... And then, yeah, he just sort of becomes a background yeah. character. All Speaking of, of background characters, Splinter doesn't really do much here. He's just constantly meditating. I think Splinter's a really hard character to use. If you're not going to yeah, make him... They were pretty smart in the first one. They are like, he's kidnapped. He's kidnapped. <laughs> well, for one thing, they didn't build a full body suit for those first two movies. He was a puppet. Yeah. So that limits what you can do with him. Mm-hmm. Um. And he just, like, if you want to play up that he's old, yeah. then he can't really be this big action guy. Yeah. So it's hard to balance that out. If you really want the father feeling, which they definitely played up family in the first Turtles movie. Yeah. So th- then you want him to be older than the teenagers, but it, the funny thing is he could be, like, 30 and be older than the teenagers. <laughs> yeah, that's he true. doesn't have to feel like he's eight. I guess in rat years. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Which actually leads to a really funny joke in the newest one. Um, but yeah, no, Splinter, again, because I really like Splinter in the first one. And he's just kind of there. He, he The whole thing builds up to him going, I made another funny. And it's like, okay. Also, the pizza, like, I get it. The turtles like pizza. But man, they made, a sh- made it look like New York really loves pizza. Re- everyone is eating pizza in the they, beginning of this movie. They, yeah, <laughs> instead of having all the everyone's TV getting stolen yeah. in the city, this time just everybody everyone's eats eating pizza. pizza. So yeah, for me as not a hardcore Turtles fan, I was disappointed that it's a big step down from the previous one. Uh, and I guess, I mean, maybe not for you, but like a lot of fans were upset that they had kind of stuff from the cartoon, but not 100%. They got it wrong. Right. No, I, I totally get that frustration with it. Yeah. I think the tone was made it fun for kids mm-hmm. uh, compared to the darker movie. Like, it just 
it just they amped up all the fun. There's more one liners. There's more silly things yeah. that happen in the fights. Uh, I guess the stakes are just a little bit lower, so you're a little less stressed. Like as a kid, yeah. watching that first one, it's like, oh my gosh, what? Like, how can they possibly? Survive? Yeah, because like, the Foot Clan is kind of nothing in this one. Yeah, it's really everybody. Yeah. Like all the danger kind of went down. Like they're scared of. Toka and Razar, who are the silliest looking thing. Yeah, with Toka and Razar, I get like they're tough and everything, but like you could like with the donuts, like oh that's. I think they destroyed that whole like city block at one point, but like you can kind of distract them. (laughs) You probably put like meat on a stick or something and get them away. They don't seem like the world ending threat. Like no, Bebop and Rocksteady. I mean, I guess they're kind of idiots, but they're not like totally mindless. And they and they make them look tough in some of the other movies. Yeah, like. Even the original cartoon, like the first season, which is only like five episodes long, is kind of the best version of the cartoon. Yeah, they're they're like out to get the turtles. Yeah, you know, like they're 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 really a, seem like a threat in the beginning, at least yeah. until the turtles yeah. start showing them up. But yeah, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too. Um, I feel like it's one of those things. I guess it's kind of like me with Batman Forever. Like he kind of had to be there and be the right age, because like nothing will ever make me hate that movie, even though I know it's not great. Right. Like you had to be there, but like for me, who was like, I saw it a little bit later. I think not being super into the turtles, I was just super let down by it. Luckily, they made another one. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about, let me get the cover here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, not Turtles in Time, although some releases title it Turtles in Time. I don't know where that came from. I mean, there's there's a game, Ninja Turtles, you know, Turtles in Time. But, like, when did that start accidentally getting slapped on it? From what I can hear, I think people were just calling it that. And then some of the releases, yeah. For it. Yeah. Um, Here we go. America's most awesome amphibians are back, and this time, their history in an all-new motion picture adventure when a magic scepter accidentally transports April back through time to the 17th century Japan. The boys take off in hot pursuit. Cowabungling. That's not a wow word. Uh, their way out of the sewers into the samurai <laughs> That should have been the goddamn tagline subtitle. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Samurai Orama. <laughs> uh, now they must battle the evil Lord Norinaga to reclaim the magic scepter that will bring them back below the subways of New York City. So join the heroes on the ha- it, heroes on the half shell. In a half shell. But this is heroes on the half shell. Uh, in a totally turtle rific trip through the entire the trip through time the sorry it's a little format a little weird trip through time the entire family will love and look entertainment today magazine said turtles 3 is the best of the series oh god loaded with great action humor and family oriented fun now tell me your thoughts on this one i really am not a huge fan <laughs> uh, keep, keep talking. I just want to see when this came out. I totally know. get that they need to do something new. They've had they've done two movies in New York, two movies where they're fighting Shredder. They want to do something new with the brand. The the comics, which is you know not what they're following exactly, but a little bit of source material had the turtles be in New York, then run away to the country, come yeah. back to New York, eventually go to space. Like that comic had the turtles branch out in adventures. Yeah. Um. So they were like, well, we, we got to do something different than New York. We got to get them somewhere else. And, uh, you know, the idea of combining samurais or, or, like, ninjas or something like that from the past is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. But the execution of this movie to just, like, send them somewhere to, a, to deal with a whole bunch of characters that we don't have any connection to and don't really care about, mm-hmm. I think made for a really rough yeah. uh, buy into the movie. Here's something shocking. Although not, for me, a part three that I actually enjoy. I actually don't mind this one. I don't okay. love it, but, like, people act like it's, like, the worst thing ever sometimes. And I'm just like, you know, I've never had a real big issue with it. I get on, like, a technical level. Uh, it might not be the best. I think it's shot very well. But, yeah, the turtles don't look quite as good. And they put them in those samurai armor to get around animating their face. But I thought that was a clever. I think that was a fine. That fine was mechanism. clever. 
I like the subplot of all the priests that go that swap the with guard. them, yeah. and then like Casey Jones is back, yeah. and we get to see his ancestor also. I like that they brought back Casey. Yeah, you know, I, I that was a good idea because there's a character I care about. Yeah. coming back into the franchise, and there's something for April to do. She's like, well, now I'm back in time, and I gotta deal with like a Jap- Japanese warlord and also a like a colonial guy a colonizer dude i gotta like figure out this whole thing the the colonial guy seems to be there to give an excuse for the characters to speak english yes when they're there and yes it's silly that so many characters do speak english (laughs) in feudal japan but yeah um no i i don't hate it it's it's one of the it's so it came out in 1993 right i don't know when i saw it i might have seen it before too i'm not sure uh but i remember like the toy i had a toy of the samurai turtle with the scepter okay uh, and I also had a toy of, like, they made some weird Turtles toy. I had one of, like, I don't know, it might have been uh, Leonardo as, like, a caveman. Yeah. And he had a Triceratops. Yep. That was weird. Um, yeah, so I remember this really being advertised. And it's, I remember actually, I remember renting it, watching it at my grandfather's, and thinking it was okay. And then getting older and hearing how everyone hates it. And I was like, oh, I probably hate it, too. It's probably going to suck. And then I watched it, and I'm like, yeah, it's whatever. The weirdest thing to me is that mm. the turtles look worse in this movie, yet they use screenshots of these turtles' heads for almost all the streaming advertisings for the other That movies. is weird, isn't it? Why put the ugly turtles on the screen maybe to, those to make are like, pick the movies? Maybe those are like the most brightly lit that Probably. they had references. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is one thing where like me not being a big fan of the cartoon actually works because okay. I'm not expecting to see... Okay. Characters like you guys probably expect. I want to see Krang next. I want to see this. I had no expectations. Like, oh, cool, they're back in time. And I liked, even as a young kid, I like learning about history and stuff. So seeing turtles in history. Now, look, it's not great. It's a little confusing. Uh, Splinter looks like shit. By the way, Splinter looks terrible. Splinter looks awful in this. It's a little confusing. They go back in time. I'm like, okay, but then the general there is like, demons came before. To fight my ancestors. And I'm like, okay, he's going to have like a scroll of some dragons or something. But then the scroll opens up and it is the turtles. It is literally the turtles. And I'm like, so is there going to be another movie where they go further back in Japan to fight that guy's grandfather? Like, this doesn't make, that's something you would do at like the, that would have been cool at the end of the movie. Right. Where it's like, somebody makes a scroll. Or like midway through the movie, someone is like in a museum and they see the turtles. Like, that would have been cool. Kind of like Evil Dead 2 when they open up the Book of the Dead and it's clearly Ash with the chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah, that's a weird continuity error. And also, I'm pretty sure it's a joke. I'm pretty sure that rat's not Splinter's ancestor. I'm pretty sure that's a joke. Probably. Yeah, it's probably just a joke. The fact is they put it right after Casey Jones' ancestor, so it makes you think it is Splinter. You look familiar. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and then not every joke lands. Um, The Addams Family one. Was that just so it could be in the trailer because the Adams Family movie had just come out and was popular or something like that? Oh, yeah, it did come out that same year. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense, but that is a joke that is immediately dated well, there's as a, soon as the movie's done. There's a lot of those. Like, the they call a lot of characters names, like Clint Eastwood and things yeah. like that, and it's like... They do that in the second one, too. Yeah, but to the They're kids... They're like, Ralph Nader and shit. Yeah, and it's all stuff that goes over the kids' head. I mean, I guess yeah. it was, like, trying to throw something at the parents. Yeah. Because most kids don't know who these people are yeah. watching these movies. You're just like, okay. Yeah, and, like, the turtles like to dance a lot in this. Which, again, yes. my first exposure to turtles being that tape. I'm like, wow, these guys really like dancing and singing. I don't know what their deal is. It's interesting in the opening of the movie, they are, like, practicing a lot. And they're yeah. using their swords and doing a lot of, you know, cool moves. And it almost feels like a way for them to get around using the weapons later in the movie. Like, yeah. let's give you a taste for this. But they actually use their weapons more in this one okay. than in the previous. I, that's That might be another reason I like this. They actually use weapons. They're actually sword fighting. Yes. Like, when he uses the sword to cut the guy's hair off at the end, that was kind of fun. Um, I, I, I do wonder if the parents were more accepting of the, the fighting because it was always, like, sword to sword versus, like... Um, what I think was Power Rangers was out. Yeah. Well, Power like, Rangers. Well, now they got superheroes that are shooting people. We got to well, worry about that. Power Rangers. That somebody kicked someone in the head. There, that was like <laughs> yeah. their biggest problem was that there's an episode from the Japanese footage where Jason yeah. kicked somebody in the head and parents lost their I need, minds. Uh, 
Do they, in Power Rangers, do they make them stop using their guns pretty early on? I think they cut around a lot of that footage. Yeah, because I remember they would, like, combine their weapons and stuff, but I feel like after a while they stop doing that, and I'm like, hmm, well, I already bought the big dragon cannon, right? so damage is already done. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I did like seeing their weapons, and actually I did it as a test a few years back. Um, That game came out, Ghosts of Tsushima. Okay. And there was a mode in that called Kurosawa mode where you can make the game black and white and add film grain to it. That's cool. So when that came out, I took Ninja Turtles 3, like the big fight scene where they're like by the river. And I'm like, a lot of you guys hate this movie. It's because you're not watching it in Kurosawa. And I made a black and white film grain. I'm like, wow, this actually looks really good. (laughs) This actually looks like a really good movie when you add the black and white and film grain. (laughs) Again, it's not great. I'm never going to put this one on unless I'm marathoning. I just feel like the villains were not that interesting. Mm. The biggest threat to the turtles was the amount of time they were allowed to be in the past yeah that was that was the threat like those yeah. bad guys didn't really seem like they were gonna stop the turtles yeah it didn't see yeah I, I can see there's like low stakes other than being trapped in right. the that's, past that's really the the biggest thing that could happen to them is yeah the time the the staff the wand thing gets broken yeah. and they can't get back or I it did, takes too long and they can't get back i did like the guy who switches bodies with april it's uh, uh, who knew her clothes just fit him perfectly. I guess they were just very baggy on her. April is just wearing very baggy clothes that a full size man could just fit into them snugly. There's a lot of goofy questions to be asked yeah. about that. Like, like the, the honor guard keep their underwear on. Yeah. Uh, but the, they do switch their clothes for the most part. <laughs> they get to keep their swords like the honor guard. And yeah. Kino or Keno, whatever the guy's name is. He has his sword. Yeah, that's a little weird. It's like, why, why, yeah. why do they keep their stuff? And I guess there's some cool stuff in the in the past where they're like, they're trying to help like the rebels and whatnot. Yeah. And Ca- the Casey Jones ancestor turns out to be a bad guy. It seems like there was an interesting story in there that somebody had thought up about what's going on in that yeah. world that they didn't really explain. Maybe the yeah. stakes were higher in that part of the story. Maybe there could have been another like uh, they could have fine tuned this script a little bit. But I don't think the story is what a lot of people have issue with. They're just like, why right. are the turtles in the past? Why aren't they fighting cool monsters? Where are all the characters from the thing I like? And I'd be cool if like Shredder's ancestor was in the bat past. I think that would be more interesting. That would have been something. Like, oh, there's or even Shredder's. If, <laughs> even if the people were part of the Foot Clan, like even if it isn't Shredder, but like the oh, ancient this Foot is, Clan. Right. Yeah, I think that could have been an interesting part of the story. That would have been cool. That would have been cool. Um, there is the famous effect at the end where the guy disappears. Yes. <laughs> He's composited falling and he just disappears. <laughs> um, I do like the thing with the cannons cause they're introducing like gunpowder and stuff. I thought uh, there's interesting stuff in it, but yeah, it's not what fans want it, obviously. And even me who liked it as a kid, I was never like, I got to watch turtles three again. I never once said that in my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then uh, turtles went away. Not a hundred percent away. They had a pretty uh, terrible live action TV show that I watched a lot of as a kid. I feel like it was just one of those things I would have the TV on and doing other stuff. I'm like, what are the turtles doing? Oh, there's a girl turtle now. What's going on there? Um, that 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 show makes TMNT three look fantastic. <laughs> I, there's, I have one last thought, though, about Okay, yeah, one last thought, one last thought. When you watch their mouths move, yeah. you can just see the servo, yeah. like, speed. Again, I think that's why they put them in those samurai masks to, to, so they didn't have to show their face too much. They 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 sort of reverse engineered, I guess, what Henson had done, the new company that was took it yeah. over. But so it is a new company who came. Yeah, new company oh, okay. made the suits, okay. probably way lower budget. Yeah. Um, but they they did use computer like imaging to like train the servos to make certain facial expressions, oh. as well as doing some hand puppeteering. Okay. So it's sort of like they were trying to kind of advance the technology, but there's just always sort of this like pause, mm. like shift back sort of relax that is so typical of a servo yeah that somehow henson gets around yeah you know where you don't notice that you know you know what also disappoints me in these sequels i think what i liked so much about the first one was the Raphael character 
Because he was kind of like, you know, the guys were all kind of working together. He was like the hothead one. Right. He, he would go on his own. I know he goes on a little bit of an adventure with Kino. But yeah, and this one, the, these two, he's just kind of... Like, he's such a strong character in that first one. He's kind of one of our main focal points. And then he just kind of gets shoved to the background, I feel. They all become much more alike as these three movies go on. You're right. There's not a lot of variety they in They have them. more unique personalities in the first one. Yeah. We see them become a little bit more alike in the second. Mm. And by the third one, they're mostly interchangeable. Don, yeah. Donnie has a little techno babble. And Mikey has a few more, like, silly jokes. Yeah. Raph and Leo are the same character. Yeah, that's also a big issue, too. That's a big issue, too. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great, but not terrible. Now, uh, what was it, 2007, they made TMNT. Uh, now, I thought, because they had done a animated Ninja Turtles in, what, 2003, 2004? Correct. And I thought, this looked... This they look like the characters in that. I think this looks like a a three D attempt to to yeah. like continue that. So I show. thought that this was going to be like a movie for that particular cartoon. Okay. Um, and then I didn't I didn't see it because again, not big turtles dude. I saw in theaters because gotta yeah. see the turtles. But it was on like HBO or right. Cinemax. I'm like, you know, what? let me check that out. Yeah, and I put it on. And I'm like, oh, this is like a secret fourth movie almost. Now, Kevin, can you read the back of the box there? Is there a description on the back? There is. Sorry, the back of that HD DVD. Ooh. Shout out. I forget your name off the top of my head. The fan who donated me his entire HD DVD collection. They're back and they're ready to kick some shell. It's the year of the turtles as everyone's favorite hard shelled heroes finally meet their match when an army of old foes and ancient monsters under the command of a mysterious tycoon, threaten New York. Patrick Stewart, Sarah Michelle Gellar, and Lawrence Fishburne lend their voices to this powerful, action-packed thrill ride. How was Lawrence Fishburne? He was the narrator, He's wasn't the narrator. he? the narrator. I think Chris Evans is... Is Chris Evans? Casey. Casey Jones, yeah. Yeah, I... How, how, how do you feel about this one? So, every time I watch this, and I haven't seen it too many times, but every time I watch it, it makes me want them to do a sequel to Buffy the Vampire Slayer as an animated movie. Because I can't... <laughs> listen to april's voice without thinking it's buffy on the screen yeah yeah um but i enjoyed it it's a very different ninja turtles mm -hmm. in the sense that like they're fighting all new bad guys we don't really know anything about but they made them interesting and they made stakes yes i really like this one too I think it's fantastic i think it's really great um i like that they're older now mm -hmm. so probably shouldn't be teenage mutant ninja turtles they're but 19 and a half Okay, they're 19 and a half. I'm just making that up. But, <laughs> right. you know, they're still teenagers, but they're older yeah. than they were in the previous one. And again, it is kind of a sequel to the fourth one. There's a scene at the very end where there's like a trophy room of like the scepter from three, right. Shredder's helmet and the canister. But the way it's kind of presented, it could just be a follow-up to any Turtles thing. And I actually think that's a really smart way of doing it. Yes. I like that they didn't have to tell a whole origin story. No, they, they like, mentioned it briefly and they mentioned the Shredder's been defeated. And, and that's it. it and I there. think this is the first appearance of the girl. Karai. Karai, yep. yes. Who, what's her backstory in, like, the expanded, you know, like the... So she's Shredder's daughter in, in pretty much every yeah. version. But she's of not her. originally, right? Isn't there something where she didn't start off as his daughter, but she usually is turned into his daughter? That may be. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, okay. But she did come out of the comics. Yeah. The director of this movie liked her as a character and wanted to make sure she was in... In the movie. Yeah. They've used her a lot since that movie. I noticed that. I know she must have been pretty She's big kind of, in like a lot of the adaptations. I think since it kind then. of solidified her as like a legit character. Gotcha. You know, how, how once something jumps from the, the page onto yeah. the screen or the figures, then it becomes like, oh, all the fans are aware that that character exists kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so Karai's become much more popular since that movie. Cool. Yeah. I. I like I said, I turned it on one day and I really, really liked it. I liked the dynamic with the turtles. Mm hmm. I like that uh, there was like this kind of like schism. I like where they all are right now. Yes. There's so there's a schism where, what you call it? Um, Donatello is working in IT. Yep. Tech support. Tech support. Uh, Ma'am, did you turn it on and back off again? <laughs> 
Michelangelo is doing birthday parties as a dancing turtle. And all he has to, Carl. All he has to do is put a head on. That's funny. To me, that is such a Ghostbusters 2 joke. Yes. Yes. That but that's fine. Hero is now yeah. uh, doing birthday parties. Uh, Raphael has become a vigilante on his own. Which makes total sense. But yeah. Which looks really. He looks kind of like a samurai from yeah. part three. Uh, and what you call it? Donatello. Leonardo. Uh, Leonardo. Sorry. Uh, went to South America, I think. He's, he's like to doing find some himself. additional training yeah. and finding himself so he can become a better leader. And then we find out April and and Casey are like a thing. That makes sense. They yeah, were set up as a thing. They're the living together now. Yeah. And I like her whole thing. She's like investigating stuff. She's trying to work with that uh, tycoon. Yeah. The director said that he was trying to make April a more intelligent character. Yeah. Not to say that a reporter isn't smart, but mm. like... In the comics, she's like a computer scientist. She works for Baxter. Yeah. Like, that's how she gets involved with the Turtles. Mm -hmm. uh, so and then he, he changed her to a reporter for the cartoon. Right. And he just felt like that was kind of, uh, you know, a step down from the... They really Lois lane her. Yes. Yeah. So by switching her over to being this sort of, like, Indiana Jones type, yeah. like, archaeologist, researcher, it... It kind of gave her a little, a little something more to do. This is one of the Aprils I actually really like. I thought, I thought she's great, and she gets a cool yellow ninja suit at the yep. end and joins in on the team. Yeah. They, th this is actually a, a movie where they did a nice job of getting everyone involved. Yeah, like they didn't leave people at the lair. They didn't make somebody go babysit some yeah. side character. Everybody got in on the. Action. How do you feel? Of, uh, how do you feel about Mako as Splinter? His home has become like an empty shell. I think it's okay. I enjoy him. I, I enjoy him. some people don't like him as Splinter. I I really like Mako. Like I I love Code and the Barbarian. Okay. So hearing his voice, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, no, it's it's a fun story. It, it actually kind of reminds me of the Next Mutation story. Okay. Weren't they fighting like dragon demons in that? Yeah, there's a lot of weird. They fought like a vampire. I remember. <laughs> Again, that that show was just on. I wasn't particularly thrilled about watching it, but it was just always on. I do wonder if the idea to have them fight a bunch of monsters. Has something to do with Power Rangers, though. Yeah, like the popularity of that. But in, in to be like full ex d disclosure about Turtles, though they have fought like everything in yeah. reality. Like that sh that comic book took them mm -hmm. to other galaxies. They fought almost every kind of mutated animal you can think of. So yeah. there's really nothing you can throw at them that's like that's not a very turtle bad guy. Yeah, you know. Um. Yeah. I. It's a good time. I like. I like the animation. I think it still holds up. It's not. Clearly, it wasn't on the level of something like Pixar or whatever. Right. The turtles uh, are a little lanky for me. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it kind of works. It, it makes them kind of teenagery a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the monsters that, that are in it. So, what is the story? It's like the, basically a general, what was it, like 3,000 years ago? He opened some portal and to he make got- To him live forever. He got immortality, but his other generals were, like, frozen. And then now he- And then a bunch of monsters became loose. And apparently- have done nothing in 3,000 years. <laughs> For some reason. Even though apparently they're a problem, but they haven't done much. Now they're all in New York, I guess. And somehow if he can get them in a circle together... They, yeah, he like can send them open. back and lift the curse. But then like the twist later on is that his general dudes are like, we don't want to lift it. We want to live forever and be bad guys. Right. Um, and the character is Patrick Stewart. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of cool where like the main bad guy turns out not to be the main bad guy. Yeah, I think I think that's a nice little twist, a little subversive, mm -hmm. you know, expectation kind of thing where and you're you're really kind of hating this guy the whole time, and you, at the end you're like, oh, yeah. and he's using the Foot Clan. Yeah. So you figure out a way to work them in there, and then you have that character in there, right. which is pretty right. cool. Uh, yeah, it, I think it really works. I like the whole, like, Leonardo and his dynamic with, uh, I Raphael. Like, I like him fighting with Raph. Yeah, which is explored in the next few that yep. they try to, they try to jump on that. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. I like Casey Jones. He's kind of an idiot, but he's kind of fun. Um, yeah, I'm surprised it didn't do better. I don't know I, why it didn't do better. It must not have just, uh, just, you know... Either either something with the studio or it missed the mark yeah. of like what they would do a sequel for. Yeah, it was two thousand seven, right? I believe so. Yeah, I guess he had to compete with like Transformers that year. Uh, yeah, you had like Transformers, Ratatouille stuff like that was out. I can understand there was a lot going on that year. You know, everyone was watching Rise of the Silver Surfer, and, <laughs> and maybe we just weren't ready for like a Ninja Turtles reboot in that. Yeah. Era. There was a lot of stuff, like you were saying, a lot of those action properties were getting 
live action yeah things so maybe so to this... pump out like a yeah you're uh -oh. you just did transformers live action right and now we're getting sort of this like directed video 3d animated yeah, thing, and people like... probably thought it was meant for little kids but when i watch it this is probably the closest in spirit to the first one yeah it's it probably yeah. is the darkest yeah without without looking dark it's yeah it's got like stakes it's got you know yeah and jokes. the action is fun the action yeah. is really really fun there's one um, beat that I love the visuals on, but it doesn't okay. really get paid off. Yeah. At one point in the big fight at the end, Leo gets thrown into a display case of swords. Okay. And when he stands up, he has all the swords shoved <laughs> in his back. And it's awesome. Yeah. But then they don't really show him, like, using the using swords them. and losing them throughout the battle, even uh, though that's oh, yeah. sort of, like, what they're saying. I do like there. that giant battle with the Foot Clan at the yeah. end. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And the monsters are cool, too. Uh, yeah, it's just a solid time. It's a solid time. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and wish I think it it's kind of the sleeper of yeah. the bunch. Like, it's a good one that nobody talks about. Yeah, and I wish it would have got a sequel because they hint that Shredder might come back. Right. Although, if this is... Oh, yeah, I guess he could come back. I guess being crushed in a trash compactor... Didn't kill you him. You get up in, like, three months. Yeah. Being mutated and having a peer fall on you, oh, you're down for years. I mean, maybe he just <laughs> regenerates somehow because the ooze was there. Like That's knows? true. You could do something like the ooze is mutated. He could, he could be kind of grotesque and weird now. Yeah, yeah. You could do some cool stuff with that. Uh, but it was a actually another cool thing. It was cool seeing the turtles kind of working with the Foot Clan. Yeah. Like they have, they're like, all right, it's one of those cases where it's like we have a mutual enemy. Some of the best stories done in like long franchises mm. is when they introduce a new bad guy yeah. that the old bad guy has to work with the heroes to do. It, well, you've seen that with like, fun. with like Avengers with yep. Loki teaming up with Thor. Yep. Uh, yeah. You see that a lot, actually. It's a, it's a good like plot yeah. element. I mean, I it, it raises the stakes. The, the best X-Men movie is X-Men two X-Men United, where they have to unite with the bad guys. guys. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's merit to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, just an overall good time. But for whatever reason, didn't stick the landing. Right. I wonder if it didn't sell enough toys. That could because be that is often why these kind of movies don't get sequels. That could be it. And the turtle toys for this line were not in scale with any other versions of the turtles. Oh, They're really? They're, like, taller than the ones that were out in the 2000s uh, and way taller than the 80s ones. Yeah. So I wonder if collectors and kids alike just didn't push enough merchandise sales and they were like, well... It yeah. Did okay, but yeah, you know, I can see that. Now this is another thing. We're like, before we move on, we're like, the fans were upset that it wasn't. It was just new car new villains again. <sighs> I think I'm entertained by everything that's happening, but I guess if you're a hardcore turtles, like, why won't they just do Krang? I <laughs> honestly don't remember what like fan backlash mm. was in that moment. Yeah. Um, I thought it was fine. I enjoyed that it was yeah. some new characters because they made them interesting. Yeah. Um, I did like when Patrick Stewart gets like thrown around and he's like, oh, Oprah O'Neill. I must have hit my head pretty hard. I'm seeing giant turtles. But yeah, I'd say if you're a fan who slept on this one, 100% check this one out. And if you want to yeah. like abbreviate the Ninja Turtle series, watch the 1991 and then this one and just skip the other two. Yeah. yeah. You know, this would be a good one for kids. I'm surprised like yeah. more kids didn't like gravitate toward this also. Yeah, I, maybe just because they it wasn't colorful enough. Like, it wasn't... Probably. You know, it was kind of like the 1991, where yeah. if they had done a sequel to this, I bet they would, of course, correct it into more... Yeah. Because that was actually one of the things uh, in the commentary, the director talks a lot about every time anybody tried to give them input, they wanted it to be more colorful and more bright, and he, mm. he had to keep reining it in. Every once in a while, something would slip in, somebody else's idea, yeah. and it was okay. Like, they got good jokes for different people, but, like... He just kept forcing him to keep it. The one thing the, I read is like, apparently someone asked him about Venus de Milo and he's like, don't bring it up. Don't, we don't need bring it up. Uh, we never mention it. Don't bring it up around the one creator. He hates her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love people are like, why does she have shell boobs? I'm like, I don't know. Why do they have arms and legs? Like, why do they have fingers? Why do they talk? I think just because <laughs> how else do you know it's a girl? Why like, don't they have silly. beaks? There's a lot of things you can pick with the Ninja Turtles. So, there is a similar brand to, to Ninja Turtles. There's a, a cow series called... Uh, How did I... I knew Street Sharks. Code of the West Cows of Moo Mesa. Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Have you ever heard of that? No. No. So Cowboys of Moo Mesa had a toy line, had a comic, had a video game, had a cartoon. 
And when I was a kid, I used to watch the show because you yeah. just watch all the anap- anthropomorphic yeah. animal shows. And there was a female on that show, and my dad used to always make the joke. Anytime he would walk by and that show was on, he's like, don't they know a cow's udders are between their hind legs? Because they gave her boobs. They did. <laughs> so you knew she was the girl cow. Were they pink with six nipples? She just had a shirt, you know. Like, <laughs> she just was dressed like a cowgirl. I gotta check that out. Yeah, I, I don't know too many Ninja Turtles like ripoffs other than Street. Oh, Sharks. there's so many of them. There's like a dinosaur one, right? Extreme dinos. Extreme dinos. You had. I mean, do you think? Do you think? I know it's actually good, or at least the early seasons were, but like Gargoyles, I think. May- Gargoyles is fantastic. Yeah, but that might also be like, well, Turtles is good. We're Maybe doing Gargoyles. Uh, and I know a lot of the uh, the 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 gargoyles, the Power is... Rangers ripoffs, like Knights of Tiernanog. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> what the hell that was, was that? Cool. Gargoyles is sort of Ninja Turtles yeah. in the sky, like kind of. Instead yeah. of them hiding in the sewer, they hide on top of a really tall building. Yeah, you know, and that's a yeah, cartoon I would like similar. to revisit. It's really good. I I started watching it. Um, I didn't get very far, but I was yeah. watching it here and there. And yeah. I, I forgot how good it was. Yeah. I remember the music was really cool. Yeah. yeah I have so I have like the Goliath figure. There there are certain sequences from that where the animation is just gorgeous. Yeah, because it looked like the Bruce Tim Batman Yeah, It's series. very similar. Why do they have a dog? Is like was is that just a different gargoyle it's just or is a there a gargoyle? gargoyle? But he doesn't talk. Yeah, he's very different. He's kinda kind of like gargoyle. snarf. And I'm like, well, wait, are you are you are you a cat cat or a thunder? What are you? <laughs> Like Pluto. Yeah. It's like, wait. It's like Pluto and, and Goofy. Goofy's a dog that right. talks. What makes you just a dog? Well, that's that's Bronx or whatever that particular dog, whatever that particular <laughs> gargoyle's name is. Uh, but yeah, TMNT liked it. Now, TMNT goes away again. Yep. I think there's some cartoons here and there. There's Probably. Like a, there's like a 3D animated one on Nickelodeon. The 2012 show is yeah. phenomenal. Really? In my opinion. The 3D one? It's the one called, it's, it, it's often referred to as the Nick Turtles. Mm. Um, it's a little goofy. It's definitely made for yeah. kids, but I think it is fantastic. That's not necessarily a bad thing, no, though. No, because that's what you need to recoup the brand. Yeah, it's fine if you, you need have kids to be into it. It's fine if you have options. Like I know people really like the 2003 one. Yeah, that's a little bit darker, a little yes. bit more mature than the. Yes, and then people were upset that they did this yes. one. I'm like, okay, well, you have that. It's fine. The, like a lot of these brands, you can. Like, there are, like, real childlike Batman stuff and then adult Batman stuff. I'm like, both are fine. They the both Nickel- serve a purpose. The Nickelodeon Turtles have so many characters in it. Mm. Such a robust toy line. Yeah. So many plot lines. And, like, a continuing story the whole way through that mm. just really fleshes out so many ideas. And this is around the same time, like, there was a there was a Transformers 3D cartoon around this time, yeah. right? I remember people really liking that one. But yeah, then they decided, okay, Transformers is killing it, even though only the first one was really that good. Mm-hmm. Well, the three was all right, but uh, two was kind of a mess. But Michael Bay, he doesn't direct them. People often think he directs them. Well, because they're so lovingly referred to as the Bay Turtles. Yes, he definitely produced them. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, we have the Ninja Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2013. They are not aliens. I feel like that thing got blown out of proportion. So I, I would love to know whether the the comment he makes about them being of alien origin, whether he meant that the Krang were involved or the Utrons were involved in their creation, or whether he actually meant that they're aliens. Well, the way I, like, because like, I remember when they said they would have an alien origin, people were freaking out. Right, but I think fans took it to mean that they were aliens themselves. Yeah, I don't think, I, uh, when I first heard aliens, I'm like, oh, maybe the ooze is alien. Like, yeah, because the C in TCRI yeah. is cosmic. Yes. The, the, the Utron, the Krang. And you're right, there are, are aliens space. in Ninja Turtles, so right. it's not. Right, yeah. so, so if the Krang have a, an effect on the turtles their origin could be alien or cosmic yeah. and uh, so i don't know because i obviously never read an early draft mm-hmm. but i think there could have been like that version could have been okay yeah but the fans flipped out and they had to correct course well, correct the fans i think flipped out about something else when they found out uh and also this came out after iron man 3 so there were a lot of changes um this is another one I slept on, didn't see in theaters. I was kind of falling out of love with Transformers. Mm. Like, I had stopped seeing those in theaters. I didn't go back to those until, like, Bumblebee and the new one. But I finally caught it on video. And again, this is another one where, like, I don't hate it, 
people really hate it, but it's it's better than a lot of the Transformers movies. I can see that they really tried. There was some force product play. It has some of the issues Transformers has. Force yeah. product placement, too many force references. But it feels like it was made just a little bit better, but there was a lot of tampering with the script and changes, and you feel it, it in this suffers. movie. Yeah, I like the opening with the comics, which I think yeah. one of the guys, one of the creators actually drew those opening okay. things. I Yeah, th they did a good job of, like, getting, yeah. the, getting it going. Uh, yeah. I just... I just think they made the turtles really ugly, which is a problem. Yeah, and the problem was they they showed off the worst one in the trailer. Michelangelo looks awful. Yeah. See? Don't freak out. Right? I actually don't mind, uh, what you call it, Leonardo, blue one, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I mix that up all the time. Leonardo and Raphael, I think... They look, look better good. than the other two. They look really good. Leonardo looks the best, um, but they're just dressed a little too busy. Yeah. Like, I'm fine with uh, Donatello having glasses or goggles, but they're they're just too busy. They're too yeah. intricate. I get they might look too naked to some people. Right. And I get wanting to add little details to them, which is fine, which is fine. But they just, they're wearing, like, board shorts and stuff. I'm like, this is too much. This is too much. They're gigantic, by the way. Yes, they're humongous. They made them huge. And I wouldn't mind mm. if they were just wearing, like, pants or they had sweatshirts tied around their waist. Like, yeah. they did some of that stuff, but they, they put so much, like, dangly stuff on everybody. Like, yeah. Like, we carry everything we own on our backs. Like, why? Yeah. Why do they have to have, like, uh, you know, shell art? Like, he's got a turtle shell, but he's got, like, a bamboo chest plate. Yeah, the and bamboo Mike's thing was a little play, much. You know, it's just too much. It was too much. Um, another thing, appearance-wise, Splinter, played by Tony Shalhoub. He looks so bad. He looks really bad. The pr Here's the problem with wanting to be too realistic. You can't give him actual rat eyes. Yeah. We can't connect to that. It looks creepy and weird. I mean, there's a way you could do it, but watching this movie, and actually, uh, Splinter has some pretty cool scenes of this. Like, he actually has a really cool fight scene. He's using his tail a yep. lot. And I'm like, this would be really cool, but he looks like a thing I want to kill with fire because he looks just so horrifying. I also don't think you need to give a rat facial hair. Like, the little <laughs> goatee thing is weird. Yeah, the he, goatee was mu a little much for me. He's too, for like, me. <laughs> glossy. He looks wet all the time, which just yeah. is really, like, And, okay, gross. so in the first film, it was the pet rat of... Um, Amato Yoshi. Amato Yoshi. So he knew about Yoshi's fighting skills. So when he got mutated, right. he retained all that information and taught it to the turtles. Okay. In this one, he was an experiment with the turtles. And we'll go more into that soon. Uh, who they all got mutated at the same time. And he eventually finds a book on karate and, te and ninjas and teaches them that he can read, by the way. He knows how to read. They, they really kind of gloss over that one. Yeah. Uh, he Maybe can it's read. All diagrams. It's like yeah. Ikea. You yeah. learn it, you learn it for Ikea. <laughs> and he taught him that. But somehow he also took up an Asian accent. Yeah. It started dressing Asian. I'm like, where did that go? It made sense with the other ones. Right. When he calls. Where is it coming from in this one? Um, so he's like the weakest of those characters, I feel. I Again, this is another one where like I, I don't mind Megan Fox as April. I don't mind her, but I have a hard time seeing her as April, though. Like, there's just something about Megan Fox that's so Megan yeah. Fox, which is weird. Yeah. Because I'm pretty good at, like, just looking at people and thinking they're whatever character they're She's like, kind of bigger than the character, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. like we we know her from Transformers. Mm -hmm. And in that movie, it's fine. She's Michaela or whatever. But, yeah. But now she's, like, so famous yeah. And she's not doing anything to make herself not seem like every other character she's ever played. No, she's kind of So it's silly. just like, oh, here's my... I, I do enjoy her in the beginning, though, when she's investigating the turtles and everyone thinks she's crazy. That's fun. I have fun. fun with her. I think she's I had good a lot in the of movie. fun with her. Yes. Yeah. I actually like... Uh, they tie her to the turtles' origin, which right. I know some people were upset with. I didn't mind it that it's much. okay. Yeah, I don't really mind it. It causes an issue with the script, but that's not her character's fault. Uh, so, yeah, her dad worked with this guy, Eric Sachs. Right. Which which is an angelized name of Oroku Saki. Um, yeah, her dad worked on this thing. There was, like, a fire or something. She, like, the, tur the turtles and Splinter were mutated, and she, like, she's the one who named them. 
And I do like when she meets the turtles and hears their names, she's like, oh shit, I know this. And she finds the old tape. And I like, I like that she's talking to herself to her roommate. Her roommate is creeped out. They were my childhood pets and they were named after Italian Renaissance painters. Mom, I want to move back home. And I also like when she goes to Whoopi Goldberg. Right. Who begged to be in the movie. Apparently oh, she yeah. wanted, she, yeah, when I, when I was reading, her kids loved the turtles growing up, and okay. she tried to get in the old ones and never got a call back. Oh. So when she found out they were doing it again, she's like, please put me in this. Okay. Um, and then she doesn't come back for the next one. Um, I do like what she's explaining her. She's like, they are mutant turtles that are ninjas and also their teeth. Like, that's a lot yeah. of fun. And I'm sorry, but uh, I'm a stupid Will Arnett fan. I love Will Arnett. I enjoyed him. I don't know if his character's accurate to what it was in the cartoon in the, or comics. In the cartoon, he's really, really snobby. So okay. this is kind of funny to switch him over to more, more of a bumbling guy. Who he becomes he, snobby, though. He does. He, he does. This his origin he story does. of snobbery. Yeah. I really like him. and he, Not every joke he does lands, but his delivery is usually really, really good. Um, yeah, so I, I don't mind it. But yeah, the Turtles... I appreciate that they all feel like different characters. Yeah, they did. It's more their design than their look. It was kind of mean that they dubbed over one of them with Johnny Knoxville. Yeah. Because all the other ones are doing their actual voices. And I don't think it adds anything. Like, I don't wa watch it and go, oh, Johnny Knoxville. Well, like, he doesn't come back it. for the second one. And I didn't even realize. He so. killed it. Like, this, like I just. They, they did that with Hellboy. Yeah. Uh, Frazier's brother, Niles Crane, voiced uh, <laughs> Abe Sapien. Okay. And then I feel like in the second one, from what I remember, I think he was like, I feel like my voice work overshadowed like the great work he was doing. So I decided not to come back. So, and it worked. What's yeah. it called? He did a good job. Um, but yeah, I thought that was bizarre. Though. Like, why not get everyone to revoice them? So one of the things that I don't, I'm not a huge fan of in this movie yeah. is they move like Spider-Man. A lot of people complain They're about that. They're enormous, but they like swing around the city doing parkour. Well, keep without, in mind, they now have to compete with multiple Spider-Man yeah, movies. Yeah, and, so. and I get that part of it, but it's like, they just, they, they're they just so unbelievable in that yeah. part of it. I like how both these movies came out in different Spider-Man continuities, because 2013 was like during the uh, Andrew Garfield, right. and then 2016 is when Tom Holland got introduced. Uh, so yeah, I, I get a lot of people were, I mean, I know they're supposed to move like ninjas, but the way it's shot, it's if, so big to be yes. able to move with the momentum and speed. Yeah, they would be just very heavy. Seems odd. Shells are heavy. Right. Why do you think turtles move so slow? And they're like sliding on glass and not damaging anything and jumping from roof. Like, yeah, they're, they're surfing no, through sewers yeah. and stuff. I don't. I don't need the concrete cracking under their feet like they're the Hulk. Yeah. But I do feel like they just. The physics is just unbelievable when you watch yeah. it. Yeah, uh, but no, I, I enjoy them. The story's okay for the most part. Here's where it falls apart. And this was a mistake, and they should not should not have done it in the first place. But when they did it, they should have just committed to it. Shredder was just going to be a white guy named Eric, and he was the evil businessman who was April's dad's partner, and he was secretly running the Foot Clan, who are more terrorists in this one. Yeah. They rework them for the second one. Yeah, they didn't even really look like ninjas in it. No, but remember, like, the Foot Clan called that because they step on people. I'm like, is it, was that in the other one? Well, the real reason it's called the Foot is because it was a parody of the hand. Mm, right. But anyway, um, yeah, I wasn't too thrilled about the Foot Clan in this. As much as I don't mind, there were some, like, even as a non-fan, like, that was stupid. They should yep. have been ninjas. Because, um, I mean, even the new Batman movies had ninjas. Why yeah. not have them? Yeah, uh, yeah so... It was going to be Eric Sachs. I'm guessing Iron Man 3 came out that did the Mandarin twist, which I actually liked. And now that we got that god-awful Shang-Chi movie with the real Mandarin, and he was like nothing, he was like a boring character, I'm like, I wish you guys would have appreciated the Mandarin twist. They were like, oh no, that got a bad reception. Also, I think some toys came out, and people realized Eric was Shredder. So they like clearly do these forced reshoots where Eric is working for the shredder and he's like hello my master who raised me in vietnam or whatever or no no he raised him in japan right his dad died in vietnam uh you took me in and i'm doing this all for you my master and i made this armor for you and like so shredder is like very disconnected from the turtles the guy who should be the main villain is kind of connected to him and it causes this like weird 
character thing, and I think it really hurts the movie. It it does because it makes no sense, like why the Shredder hates the player. Like taking that dynamic out, Shredder and Splinter yeah. need to be connected. Well, that's the thing. There's and like a not. line of dialogue during their fight where it it makes it seem like Shredder has like a personal personal beef with Splinter. It's like you didn't know Splinter. Like at least Eric. I mean, it was just a rat. He could be like, I remember you. You always bit me in the lab or something like that. But yeah, Shredder seems like he has like a real personal vendetta. But it's just yeah, even even like the the they show like some flashbacks to the night when that fire happens, yeah. and the the voiceover like the telling of the story hints at that like Eric and Shredder like you know tried to to kill her dad and like the fire happened and da da da. Yeah, and it's like yeah, but Shredder's nowhere in this flashback. I know. Like, he's being mentioned like he's there. Well, no, he is. That's from when it was actually Eric. <laughs> right, right. But it's, like, it's just so odd because they, they specifically tell you, like, they were involved in, like, this yeah. this event. He's just not there. Like, yeah, oh, and that supposed to notice he's off camera. That weird kind of last-minute change yeah. and rewriting really hurts what I think is an otherwise fun movie. Yeah. Um, the action scenes go on a little too long sometimes for my liking. That that snowy mountain thing, I'm like, where are like I, are, wow, they're really upstate New York, and somehow they took a sewer all the way back to Manhattan. I'm like, is there one sewer line that brings you all the way back to Manhattan? One sewer main straight back. <laughs> also, product placement. <sighs> New York loves their pizza. Uh huh. Or so we're told. Yeah, New Yorkers they don't really like to. They don't really eat Pizza Hut. No. They'll always talk about, like, they're specific. They're, like, a little too into their pizza. But they're eating, like, the Pizza Hut stuff. Like, I know it's a product placement, but it feels weird that New Yorkers... Then again, they're turtles, so... When this movie came out, I did a video where I ordered a pizza <laughs> and, like, had a katana in my hand. It was, like, the only video I ever shot in my kitchen for, for the yeah. early version of my channel. The 99 cheese pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that great. Um... Yeah. Uh, also, why is Splinter such a jerk to them? He really is. He just like mistreats them. I knew he's trying to make them better fighters or whatever, but he's like, yeah. it, it. You ever read Matilda or, yeah. or see the movie? You know, to the yeah. jokey. Like that's what I feel like every time they're talking about this like <laughs> torture thing they're gonna do. Each one has their own little personal hell he's yeah. invented. Speaking of Matilda, they remade it as a musical recently. Yeah, I didn't watch it. Okay, because I don't give a shit about Matilda. I did see it. Someone. This, there's a huge dance number in it. Someone cut it to Rob Zombie's, uh, like, soup or no. Yeah, Rob Zombie's Dragula. Really? It works so well. That's funny. I've never seen, I don't even know what the real song is, but it okay. was showing up on Twitter, and I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, why is the music working so well with this fucking kids, anim like, kids uh, musical movie? But anyway, anyway. Flipping through the trees, the Shredder is like the biggest misstep. And again, that's my favorite character. So when you're lazily trying to work, one, you changed him too much, which again, someone should have been like, hey, I get what you're trying to do, but people aren't going to like this. There's a way you could do it. Right. You can drastically change characters sometimes, depending on who they are. Like, like Mastermind in X2 yeah. is nothing like he is in the comics, but that's not, even though he is like one of the earliest X-Men villains, I don't know many people that are like, I love Mastermind. He's my favorite. It's like, no, no. But if you took Magneto and made him like weird like that, like fans would be like, what is this? I don't like that's kind of what they did with Shredder. Uh, but then they made him very mech suity, which I think was probably an OK idea when it was Eric, because you're trying to explain yeah. why this guy, this business guy can fight these enormous turtles. Yeah. But when he's just like the Shredder, his own character, it's like, why and is he here? Weird Here's the Mexican. thing. Uh, same year, maybe the year before. Yeah, same year. Look, I knew that Shredder and Silver Samurai in the Wolverine were going to have a mech element to them. Mm. It's one of those things I just kind of accepted. Yeah. There's going to be a mech element. But in both movies, I'm like, do they have to look like Transformers? Right. Both of them look like Transformers. They look not. Silver Samurai looks nothing like Samurai. Shredder in this looks nothing like Shredder. And it's overly complicated too. The blades, like layers shooting of blades. Him. I get the idea, but it's it's too much. How do they retract? That is so weird. The magnetic like return on them. Because at this point, like what he has is less effective than just a regular gun. To be honest, yeah. even yeah. though the turtles are bulletproof, yeah, I do like. 
I do appreciate how violent the turtles are in this. Yeah, I think that's a fun twist. They were never allowed to be super violent in the other. They kick that one foot clan guy into like several subway trains <laughs> that are running. Like that guy is dead. That there's no chance in hell that guy is alive. Eric Sachs gets totally ruined. Yeah. Not that I care, but he was just like it, when he was the main villain, that was fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then it's just like, now he's the guy that the humans have to take care of while the turtles fight the shredder and he just loves money. Yeah. It's like, that's not how he was acting early on. It seemed like he really cared about this whole plan and the shredder. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm going to be stupid rich. I'm like, what? That doesn't make And William Fickner is a good actor. Yeah. No, I like him. I like him. Um, it actually, it did kind of work out because I think. April O'Neil was supposed to have a fight with what's her name again? Karai. Karai. I think she was supposed to have a fight scene with Karai, but then she got pregnant. Okay. So they had to like rework that. Cause yeah, it's kind of weird. Like Karai, where is she in a yeah. lot of that movie? Uh, she comes back. Don't worry. They get their fight scene at some point. Shredder is the biggest misstep. Uh, and then the plan was okay. literally from the Spider-Man movie. Like a year before, we're going to put a big cloud in the sky and then it's the same thing as like Mission Impossible and a lot of these other movies uh, where it's like, we're going to make a virus and then we'll sell the cure. It's like, God, and I And no one will know we're the ones doing it, even though the cloud's coming out of our building. Yeah, even though the cloud's coming out of our building. And yeah, you're right. There was a lot. It's not even it's not even ripping off the good Spider-Man movies. No, it's, but it's yeah, it's just a lot of rehashed like. Yeah stuff and i feel like the turtles the turtles were enjoyables from what i saw i feel like they could have been better like that scene when they're in the elevator like beatboxing That's I'm, fun. Like, I'm like there could have been more of that but I'm, other than that they're just kind of shitting on each other the whole time yeah but that's mm. very brotherly in it in its own way yeah. like i i don't mind the, their personalities i yeah. wish they had kind of made them a little bit more family friendly looking yeah and i wish michael wasn't so weird about april yeah i was about to say i'm like i don't remember michelangelo being that in i mean the they've April always deal. made little comments and number three they have the swing thing when she cuts yeah. off the bottoms of the robe and yeah you know th there's always been that little just a little hint at that but like it's, I mean, it's too much i mean i feel bad for them like what can they date right they don't have a lot of options <laughs> maybe their sister but then that's weird <laughs> venus to milo maybe it's like they live a miserable existence. <laughs> this idea gets explored in a later one. Um, but yeah, uh, Shredder sucks. The turtles are almost there. They look weird. Actually, if more of them looked like uh, Donatello, I would have been fine with it. If they all kind of look. You mean like, like more like Leonardo? Yeah, Leonardo. Yeah. God damn it. I do that every time. Yep. Why do I, do Michael I need a picture of Michelangelo's that. nose is a little funny and his head's like a little too low or something. Yeah. Donatello's eyes are too big because yeah. the glasses magnify them. Yeah, and he's a little too dweeby for me. Like, yeah. I know he's the tech one, but it's like, what, where did you even learn all? Like, I'm starting to ask too many questions. Like, where did you learn all this shit? How do you have access to any of this stuff? He found a broken cell phone and he got the internet, I yeah. guess. I don't know. They do the thing where they, like, you know, injure Splinter, so yep. he's not there for the final battle. And they do a little tease where Sh uh, Shredder, when he's taken out, has, like, the uh, ooze on right. him. I don't even remember what happens to Eric. They, like, hit him or something? Does he die? Or is he just getting knocked out? And there, like I said, there are some cool action scenes. I do like that they don't show the turtles a lot, but that's good when the reveal is cool. But when the reveal, you're like, ew, doesn't work. Um, but I did like when they were sliding down the mountain. I think uh, Raphael, like, is that is this the one where he jumps out and uses a shell to crush everything? Yeah. Is that the? Ne I, I think he does something similar in the next one. I do think it's a little fun that they set up mm. like to beat Shredder. Yeah. They're going to do the little game from when they were a kid. Oh, yeah. Like, that, that's kind of a cute thing, you know? Yeah. It's, it's very cliche, but I did enjoy that. Like, okay, he's kicked everybody's butt. How do we beat him now? Mm. Okay, well, we're going to do this special move that we learned as kids, you yeah. know? And then uh, you get that fun tease at the end where they have the turtle mobile. Yeah. And then it definitely gets an upgrade between movies. Got to sell the toys. So yes. got to put the van in there. And it has the be do 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 That was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I can understand why some people didn't like, I, do you hate, like, it's hard, it's a hard movie to hate outright. I don't hate it, but it's one yeah. of those movies that I have no need to watch again. Yes. Like, I, honestly, I feel like if the script wasn't such a hack job, like, with rewrites, I feel like it would be looked upon a little bit better. Like, but there are some people who just write it off completely because the way the turtles look. Yeah. It's, so, I have a, a five and a seven-year-old stepson. Yeah. And I don't know which version of the Turtles I will show them first. I would love to show them the 90s one, but yeah. I know their mom would not be wild about, <laughs> like, the language a little bit. 
Yeah. But I don't know whether like the Bay Turtles is the way to go because it's a little flashier than like showing. But it's them more violent moves. than the older ones, though. It is, but yeah. I, like I don't. I'm I, I'm trying to look at like you know the modern audience. You know, yeah. like think of our parents had a fit about Secret of the Ooze and, <laughs> and the first one, but then this is what they're serving up for kids now. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's so weird well, no, there's changed. that thing where like PG-13 movies are way more violent than R-rated movies now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, we just don't show the blood. I'm like, yeah, well, the guy got shot 15 times. Hey, we didn't show the blood, though. I'm like, right. still, that's pretty violent. <laughs> um, Yeah, so the movie made a ton of money. The guy who played Raphael did not like being in this movie. They apparently screwed them over. Uh, also, hey, by, by the way, the 2013 one was directed by Jonathan Leibsman. Who I've covered a couple of his movies. Okay. I covered uh, Darkness Falls, mm. which is another movie that was totally redone in post and reshot. Uh, and we also talked about in worst Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, he did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, the prequel to the remake. Okay. Which is actually better than the remake. <laughs> um, but yes, after that, they decided to do a sequel to Out of the Shadows. And they follow the footsteps of Secret of the Ooze. A little bit, yes. But yeah, the guy who played Raphael apparently tried to get out. He was contracted for three, and he really wanted to get out of it because they kind of like shit on the Turtles. Like Megan Fox and Will Arnett and all them were treated like royalty. Yeah. And then even though the Turtles are the stars of the movie, apparently like they didn't like get invited to the premiere or something. And they were... So I have a theory on that, and it's a shitty theory. Yeah. But I think they didn't want to ruin the mystique of the turtles for the kids. Yeah, but so everyone they didn't knows. advertise. Right, everybody knows yeah. that they're not real in the movie. Yeah. But that's my thought, is mm-hmm. maybe they didn't invite them to the premiere, they didn't send them out on publicity because they didn't want to spoil it. Like, yeah. in 1990, they sent guys in suits yeah. to be on talk shows. And yeah. I, I guess the interview was pre-recorded. Actually, I think they do cut to pre-recorded okay. interviews so that way they could edit and yeah. fix things. But, like, that's how they promoted 1990. Yeah. And so... That's that's my thought. I think it's a, a crappy way to do it. They should at least be at the premiere. There's no kid watching the premiere. Like, I get it if you don't have them on Conan O'Brien or the Good Morning America show. Mm. To and they were, movie, in the, but... like, they were in those motion capture suits yeah. the whole time. And I think that was one of the other complaints they had was that, like, yeah. they just were left in yeah. the mocap suits all the time without, yeah. like, really having their needs addressed. And they're like, can, you know? can I get a ride? And they're like, well, we're just going to group you all, all together. You don't get your individual rides and yeah. stuff. It's like, oh, great. Yeah, like one guy did it just because he was had he had a kid on the way. He thought it'd be cool for him, but yeah, he's like very vocal about how he did not. And yeah. now he's a huge actor. He's like the, the new Jack Reacher. So I was like, man, they should have been a little nicer to that guy. He did blow up at the end. But yes, Ninja Turtles: Out of the Shadows comes out. Turtle power! Directed by Dave Green, who I'm actually not familiar with. Um, this is another one I skipped. Okay. Even though I didn't hate the previous one, enjoyed it to an extent, I'm just like, I'll wait. I'll wait. And I waited so long, I didn't watch it in its entirety until two, three days ago. Okay. I finally watched it, Kevin. Um, and if you're wondering why we're not reading the background, it's because this one doesn't have one for individual movies. Um, I kind of enjoy it, though, to be honest. Yeah, you know what? I watched it, and I'm like, this one's actually a lot of fun. I think they toned down some of the stuff I didn't like from the first one. Yes, they definitely course-corrected a few things. Shredder was one of them. Mm-hmm. Shredder is younger now. He's, I think he's younger than William Fickner, even though they said he raised him. But I think that's... They never say it, yeah. but I think it's because the ooze might have mutated him, made him, like, younger. Be. I mean, that's... Because if you saw what he looked like in the first one... Yeah, he's, like, one, bald and scarred up. I'm like, so. how does he look less scarred and better in this one. I think the ooze like healed him a little bit. Um they recast it uh Karai. Yeah. They got a whole new person to play her. They got uh what's his face? Tyler Perry as Baxter Stockman and Sheamus from WWE as Rocksteady. Yeah. And then the, t- the Malcolm's friend's dad from Malcolm in the Middle. I had no idea that was him. That's insane. That really is I had crazy. to Google, like, that's Bebop. <laughs> I get because he's mostly doing the voice. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, oh, that's cool that that was him. So, yeah, I remember people, uh, like Turtle fans I know, who really didn't like 2013, but they were like, well, I got to see this one. Yeah. Because it's got Bebop, Roxette, Baxter, Stockman. And for some reason, this is important to a lot of you, I guess. Krang. No thing is smarter than the Krang. We like Krang. It's fu- I know, I know, but it's funny that people are like, I 
It's not a turtle. We need, oh shit. It's all right. They're like, we need Craig. We need Craig. We need Craig so bad. I'm like, oh wow, you guys really like Craig. All right. <laughs> He's a really big part of the lore. He is. It's weird that it took this long to get him in a movie. I I think he probably was the right time to put him in a movie. Like, yes, you I think do him as time. a Jim Henson and also, thing would have been weird. And also, if we're ripping off everything, there's so many alien and they, like Transformers, right. Avengers. Like, this is the time at the height of superheroes fighting alien invaders. This is where you bring in Krang. Yep. Uh, voiced by, uh, oh, God. Oh, God. I got to look up his name. Hold on. Sorry. Brad Garrett. Oh, geez. Yes, voiced by Brad Garrett. It apparently was almost voiced by Fred Armisen. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, but no, it. Brad, Ga apparently there was like a scheduling thing. So Brad Garrett stepped in. So yeah, the story for this one. Uh, the Turtles are fun superheroes, but they're sad that they live in the shadows. Mm. Thus the title. Uh, they, I like that Will Arnett has become the hero of the city. He took credit for everything that happened. I think that's really funny. Yeah. And it, it, it's almost like the Batman movies. Yeah. You know, like we're, we, you know, you, you need to be the hero because we yeah. can't take the credit for this. And yes, you know, and, um, I do. Yeah. So they're feeling a little insecure about where they are. Uh, I like that April O'Neil is still doing her investigating stuff. Mm -hmm. She's dressing in sexy schoolgirl outfits to flirt with Baxter Stockman and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, she's still pretty decent in this. Yeah, they're investigating Baxter Stockman, who uh, was involved in some kind of mutagen stuff. But it turns out he is also involved with the Shredder, and he's mm -hmm. trying to break Shredder out of prison. Right. Um, who's being transferred to a different uh, prison thing conveniently. With uh, Bebop and Rocksteady. Yes. Uh, in the same prison transfer stuff. And we also get introduced to the new character, Casey Jones. More on him in a second. During this whole heist, which they have the new turtle van, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. I could see, like, I'm like, they were definitely the selling a toy, but like, awesome. yeah. that was the most cartoony. It's a fun toy, too. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay. They, uh, they're trying to save uh, Shredder. They realize they could teleport him, but it's risky. He teleports, he goes to Dimension X, meets Krang, and Krang's like, hey, buddy, I've been watching you. You need to get three pieces of my machine to bring me and the Technodrome through so we can rule the world. And Shredder, for some reason, just trusts that he's just going to be nice to him afterwards. Uh, Shredder is now played by a different guy uh, who I think was in the Wolverine. I think he was one of oh, the characters. Yeah, okay. that, I think he was the asshole fiance that the one girl was set up with. Oh. Um, so yeah, he agrees to help Krang. I guess just because he has to get back to Earth. Somehow, he has to get so back he to has Earth. To play along. Yeah, so he agrees to help Krang take over the Earth, mm -hmm. and he on his way he's gonna mutate Bebop and Rocksteady because he hates the turtles. Also, he wants revenge, and he actually looks like Shredder. Yeah, he actually has just like a black latex suit. It could have added a little color to it, but with the regular blades, not weird CGI blades. He actually doesn't look bad. It looks fine. It looks fine. And he does stuff for the movie. He doesn't have too many fights. Right. But well, he's, he's, like, he's important. He's not just standing around being mad at people. Yeah. He's commanding people. Mm -hmm. He's somewhat menacing. That's... He's actually a character and not a shoehorned in body yep. double. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the um, breakout scene. Yeah. Is fantastic. Yes. Like they got all these ninjas on motorcycles. They're yeah. flipping cars. And, and a lot of that's practical effects stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a great scene. Yeah, it was really cool. To introduce the turtles, introduce Casey. Yeah. And again, the turtles still kind of look weird. They do. They, but they, at this point, you kind of just got going along with it. You're used to it, and they've tweaked them just a little bit. Just a they've little bit. They've softened a little bit. They got rid of some of the junk on them. Yeah. Like, yeah, they really did, didn't they? Yeah, they, they look way less bit. busy in this one. They look a lot better. Maybe that's another thing that didn't was, wasn't was taking me out of it. I'm like, oh, yeah, they actually look kind of decent. Yeah, they, they improved the Turtles and Splinter, I think, considerably for the second one. Yeah, Splinter looks a little bit better, although he does still have some beady, the beady yeah. evil rat I mean, eyes. They can't change the design completely, but at least he feels you gotta furry, give him pupils. Slimy. You got to give him pupils and an iris. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, So, yeah, uh, I think it's a fun time. Uh, it's enjoyable that there's an evolution of the characters. The turtles get a lot of scenes of just them, which I, is nice. I enjoy them going to the basketball game. Like, yeah, I, I like that this movie has them be a part of New York. Like the yeah. fact that they're a fan of a New York sports team and stuff actually mm. makes them feel like they live in New York. Like yeah. that's one of those things that doesn't really happen a lot. Like mm -hmm. if, 
if well, I think living, in the past, if, it might have just been licensing. Like, do yeah, we probably. really want to license the Knicks for and, this? And that, that makes total sense. Yeah. But like, if you just if you live in the sewers of New York, you and have access to the internet and TV or whatever, mm. you're going to be watching local yeah. news, local sports. And I, I just thought that was a really fun element to have them be able to like sneak in, watch yeah. the game. Their layer is pretty cool. Yeah. There's a there's a cool thing where. Again, they feel like they're outcasts. They want to belong to that world. But uh, they find out uh, pretty early on that there's this new ooze that can kind of make them human. Mm -hmm. And then they're debating. They're like, should we do this to finally fit in? But then we can't really be superheroes to save the city. But why bother? Because the city doesn't know who they are. They think we're monsters. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it feels like a plot of like the cartoon, I guess, Krang and Shredder working together. They got to make a thing. You got to make a sky beam. You got to make a, in. you got to make a sky beam. The, the, the turtles need to fight monsters and ninjas. Mm -hmm. So you got Bebop and Rock City. I like that whole scene where they're in South America, like the planes. Yeah, that is so over the top. Yeah. And I enjoyed Ridiculous. Bebop and Rock Steady in this. Yeah. No, they, they did a really great, yeah. like, uh, Give, giving them fun personalities. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're not just like total idiots like in the cartoon. Yeah. And That's I look, they, they look kind of how you want them to look. Yeah. Because, I mean, they kind of got stuck with the designs for the turtles in the previous one. But right. you could tell they were like, let's make them look a little, a little bit better. better. Um, same thing with Shredder. Like, we can give him a new outfit. Yeah. That's not that. Uh, and Krang, I think, looks pretty good. Yeah, he's all right. It's I, I, I think the... Like the brain coming out on a tentacle all the yeah. time from the body is a little goofy, but and they do it a little too much, yeah. especially during the fighting. They do it a little too yeah. much, but I like that they kept the robot guy. Right, he doesn't Body's look as dumb because he's a little too robot-y. <laughs> um, yeah. So all that is fun. Here's what doesn't work. I feel bad saying this. I like him, Kevin. I know it's cool to hate on him now because some stuff he said about the strike. Mm. I like this actor. I liked a version of this character that I had seen in other films. I was excited for both of those things to combine. Casey Jones is terrible in this. Yeah. He's the worst part of the movie. Why did they make a vigilante guy a cop? That's weird, right? That's not something from anything, right? Yeah, not that I know of. And it just yeah. seems like a bad idea. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's too obvious. I mean, I get it to a point where, like, oh, there's only so much I could do within the system. I need to be, oh, they were ripping off The Dark Knight Rises, where the Robin character is a cop yeah. that becomes a vigilante. There you go. I just I answered so. it. I just yeah. answered it. Because a lot of these movies, and even like Transformers, it's like, what's popular in something else? How do we adapt that? I And I, I like Stephen Amell, but he is not acting good in this. Maybe he just couldn't deal with the, the like, the mocap suit and... Maybe? I just... He's not interesting. He feels like he's playing way younger than he should be. Mm. Uh... He only wears his hockey mask once. That first scene when he meets the turtles? Yeah. He doesn't have it on at all in the police precinct. I don't remember him wearing it. Mm. At, throughout, even at the end where he makes makeshift like rollerblades. Yeah, they pay too much money for him to have him cover his face. <sighs> you could have it on. It's a true, though. He was playing Arrow. He wore a mask all the time. In, in 1990, uh, Casey doesn't wear his mask that much either. Yeah, he does wear it once, doesn't he? It's like that one scene. You know? no, no, what the difference is, though? In 1990, he still looks like Casey Jones with the long hair and yeah, everything. right. Look at this. This is just... I walk past people on the street who look like this all the time. You just put a hockey He's mask on. he got a hoodie on. and jeans. It looks like a lazy Halloween costume. Yeah. Whereas old Casey Jones... You're right, he didn't wear it in three either. But then again, he wasn't really fighting crime on the opening three. I'm not saying he had to have it on all the time. But if you're going to go for it... Right. Have it on at least during the action scenes. Um, that being said, he does have a really good, uh, I do like when he meets the turtles and thinks they're aliens. And I do like when he's in the sewer and he's like, guys, I don't want to alarm you. There is a giant rat back there. It's a shame it's a sequel. Because yeah. it feels like it's a sequel to like a better movie. But it's like, oh, wow, the first one was really bad. This one's really, really entertaining. I was ho hoping there was going to be a third because I felt like they were doing all the right course corrections. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now they had burned a lot of the good characters that we have always wanted to see with Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah. But there's so many turtle characters that yeah. they really could have done something else And with you could have brought those characters back. I like that they yeah. put Shredder on ice for later yeah. on. How'd you feel about the Technodrome coming in piece by piece? I thought that was cool. I, I, I didn't mind I guess that. it makes sense versus teleporting the whole thing. Yeah. And it gives them something to, like, 
do. And they can surf more. They're doing way more surfing in uh, this. I, I don't like the rocket roller skate. I don't, <laughs> I don't mind, mind Donnie having a drone. Like, I think that's yeah. worked. Michelangelo's, like, f- flying surfboard thing is really goofy. Yeah. I like how they're all so comfortable jumping out of the plane, except for Raphael. It's like, what are we doing? That was a very, like, A-team, like, be- yeah. the tough guy. Mr. T is like, I'm not getting in no plane. You know, <laughs> I'm not jumping out of this plane. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I know he had a bad time in the movie, but I thought his performance was pretty good. Raph was pretty good in this. To this um, day, the thing that with those toys that drives me crazy, they made a Technodrome toy. Yeah. In the movie, there is an eyeball cannon thing on top of it. Yes. And the toy doesn't have it. And I'm like, that's mm-hmm. the most iconic part. It's got to have the eyeball on top. Why would they not include that? I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. It's just like Epcot with a section missing. Like... That's, That's what the bizarre. Toy looks like. It's really weird. Because other than that, it's just the Death Star. Yeah, it's just Why wouldn't you thing. put the goddamn eyeball on I, top of I it? I don't know. It's so stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, Krang is okay. He kind of just shows up at the end and gets his ass kicked, really. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and it's them working together. He's a little too much like Shredder from the previous one. It's yeah. like, oh, here's a CGI turtle fighting a CGI bad guy. Yeah. And yeah. Doing ridiculous maneuvers. And the humans are doing other stuff. Yeah. And I like the, I do like the moment where they're like, no, we're going to be turtles. They throw the ooze and stuff. Yeah. Like, no, because only they can go to the, where it is because the atmosphere or something, some convoluted reason. Uh, do you think they really meant to kill Bebop and Rocksteady and then just add it that voiceover later? Because they, they lock him in a shipping crate with and the then grenade. throw the grenade in. Yeah. And then, like, the whole thing, it's actually a cool scene where it blows up. But then you hear them talking, and you're like, oh, I feel like that was added later on. Because yeah, they didn't want to kill I, them. I, I mean, I think it's smart. I hate when they kill characters yeah. in these movies where they're designed to have sequels. Yeah. You know? it, 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 there's ways you can do it. Yeah. It depends. Like, I... Uh, Two Face being killed in Dark Knight, that was kind of important. They yeah, needed if it, that. If it's yeah. plot oriented, it makes yes. sense. But when it's just like, well, that's how he's going to defeat him. It's like, yeah, Batman's going to knock the penguin out a window. It's like, well, why? Don't you want to save him for later? No, no, these contracts are a lot. They're right. very expensive. Green Goblin's going to get stabbed through the gut, you know. Green Goblin. Oh, that, that one made more sense because we know they the used story. It for motivation. Yeah. Yeah. But like Dr. Octopus dying, I'm like, I don't think he needed he didn't to, need die. to die. Um, but yeah, the, this one is fun, and I feel like a lot of people skipped it because they didn't like the previous one, right. which, granted, the previous one had a lot of problems with it, and I understand why people didn't see it. I didn't see it. Uh, but yeah, I feel like you should maybe check out this one also. It's Again, fun. It's mostly just Casey Jones that sucks. Yeah. Everything else, they're really embracing the cartoon aspect of everything, mm-hmm. right down to having the theme song at the end of the movie yeah. with the animated sequence. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, how, how was fan reception to this? Because everyone I know who did see it thought it was okay. Yeah, I think it was just kind of okay. But it, 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 you know, it, it was the sequel to the yeah. movie nobody really liked, and yeah. so it just was kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah, it was kind of fun. I think people did enjoy the fan service of mm. getting to see some of these characters on the big screen. Yeah, I appreciate but, they went like big with it. They're like, yeah. might as well just do okay, them all. We did one. Let's get everybody. Let's in this do one. Shredder, Krang, Bebop, Rocksteady, and we'll. We'll save Baxter Stockman for later. And then right. April gets to fight uh, Karai. Yep. Uh, she gets to have her fight scene with her because I guess she wasn't pregnant this time. So she could do it. Um, yeah, and you get a little bit more Will Arnett. Yeah. He's fun. He's fun. Uh, yeah, then that didn't do well. I feel like that, I feel in, in that guy's interview, I think he said like the second week the movie was out, they knew they weren't going with the third one. Right. I feel like it might have made money, but it made significantly less than the previous one. They're like, oh, we're not going to get lucky a third time. Let's just call it quits. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a bummer that didn't continue. But now we have Mutant Mayhem. Which is in theaters now at the time of this recording. We both saw it separately. Yes. And, yeah, it's out now. It's uh, produced and I think written by Seth Rogen. <sighs> Sorry, I, just, I just don't like Seth Rogen. I mean, I like his work. It's just him personally the last few years. He's turned into a real asshole. But I, I left that at the door. I okay. left that. It, it was hard because the movie started with him before the movie going, oh, thank you for coming to the theater. I'm like, ah. I'm like, I don't want to look at you. I got to hear your voice. I don't want to look at you. Uh, but yeah, I watched it the other night. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. They had a very unique animation style. Yeah, it's it's 
getting compared a lot to Spider Verse, but it's not quite the same thing as Spider Verse. Not quite. It, it has some similarities, but it's not the same. Yeah. I really enjoyed the visual style, but there were moments where I couldn't tell what was happening. Like it was the it's, screen it's busy. was busy. Screen was a little too busy, a little too muddy. Also, it was weird that like everyone is so exaggerated and weird looking, but then they're watching real movies. I'm like, no, nah, that doesn't work. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to jump too far into a yeah. specific part of it, but like, so many people freaked out about April being different and 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 right, like body type and skin color yeah. and all sort of stuff, and and everyone just kept kind of comparing, like showing pictures of the original cartoon where mm. April was kind of this like bombshell. Yeah. Everyone was ugly in this movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. everyone in New yeah, York. Yeah, there wasn't really a handsome gentleman out of the no bunch here. One. I mean, the, everyone in New York was a slob. Yeah. Like, also, keep in mind, she is a teenager herself, which I think right. one of the newer cartoons, one, also made her black, but two, also made her, like, part of the team and, like, the similar yeah. age, right? Right. The Nick Turtles, um, the one that I said was really good, they made yeah. her a younger kid. But then there was a one after that. Then there was one after that yeah. rise of the Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles, which took a lot of Bay turtle influence but right. was really little kid and silly yeah uh that one they did yeah have her be black in that one and i know people were expecting me to get angry about it and i was just said like guys i just i don't really care about april o'neill in general like i liked her in the first movie tmnt megan fox in the first one was interesting but i'm not like april o'neill is my favorite character ever for me it's like that's the lady who hangs out with the turtles and that's for me i'm like that's all i really know her doing and in this movie, guess what? She was a lady who hung out with the turtles. There's actually a little controversy going on with the toys. Really? The April figure is not single carded. She's not in a single pack like this. Oh, yeah. She's in a box set with the turtles and a Bebop repaint figure. It's an exclusive to one of the retailers, and there are black versions and white versions. Really? Yes. They. She's released in two skin tones. I get her being grouped with other characters because, I don't know, if you go to a... The female toys don't sell that if well. If you go usually. to a Five Below right now, you can find a lot of Mary Marvels and Rose Ticos. Mm -hmm. So it's smart. Yes. Because the before, they just wouldn't make the character. Right. And it's like, well, that's not fair to someone. It's smart to package them with someone. Yep. It's like, well, I really want that. So that makes sense, but making a they white version both is... both versions. So... Wait, they're doing that in America? Yeah. Oh, no, that's something you, like, do overseas. And then well, you that's, just, that's... And then the, you play dumb. You're like, oh, I can't believe it. It must have been a mistake. A lot of the toy people thought that the, yeah. the white version was getting shipped to other markets or something. Maybe they were going to change her skin tone in the animation. Yeah. You know, like, like that was kind of the rumor. Yeah. But people are finding, like, equal numbers of these sets showing up to retail here in the U.S. So. That's messed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the story in this... And I actually appreciate that they... For a Turtles origin... I didn't mind them leaving Shredder out. It was yeah. a nice change. I think it was a nice change. It was a nice change. So in this version, Baxter Stockman uh, is not a fly man, but he creates a fly man. He basically creates the ooze, and he actually creates all the mutants. I don't know how you feel about that. Like, I, th I thought that was fine. Okay, yeah. So he creates all the mutants, and then one thing falls down the sewer and creates the Ninja Turtles and Splinter why the turtles were in the sewer, even in the original one, I never understood. Actually, that's getting back to the 2013 one. I like how they explain why there were turtles in the sewer. Like, I know people flush things down the toilet or whatever, but it's like, there just happened to be four turtles? In the comic and the cartoon, a kid is leaving a pet store and he, like, drops the bowl and they uh, fall down the drain. That but makes in, more sense. But in the 90s yeah. movie, they don't really show, they just, they're just, they're just I there. find these turtles in the ooze, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that was there, and then uh, Splinter raised them. Yeah. Uh, so they are like, I don't know, they're young. They're like 12. They're, they're very young, yeah. Yeah. And they sound like young teenagers, which mm -hmm. I know threw a lot of people off. I didn't, like, in the trailer it weirded me out, but during the movie, I wasn't bothered by it. The one voice I thought was odd to me, and I don't know why, but Michelangelo's voice yeah. never seemed like it was coming out of his body for me. Uh, I don't know what it was. It, like, just didn't fit. Maybe yeah. because Michelangelo is my favorite turtle, and he generally is, is shown as, like, the youngest turtle. Mm -hmm. Like, Donatello definitely was, like, the squeakiest. Yeah. And I get that. Okay, he's the nerd, so let's make him that one. But for some reason, the, the voice that kept coming out of Michelangelo, I kept thinking would have fit better on one of the other turtles. Mm -hmm. But that was my own, like, yeah. 
take on it, but I, I did enjoy that they had young kids. Yeah. I don't I, know how that's going to work out for sequels because yeah. their voices are going to change. Yeah, I just recast. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But yeah, because usually it's adults playing the teens, and right. that's the thing. They never, in these, the, the Bay ones never felt like teenagers, yeah. even though they were technically like 15. Yeah. Um, but no, in this, they actually feel like teens. They feel like they're doing stuff that teens are doing now on their phones and whatnot, doing weird dance challenges. Well, I do like that part where they're all doing like weird dances. Yeah. <laughs> I think Michelangelo's like twerking. I'm like, that's kind of funny. I enjoyed that. Um, so it's more relatable. Cause like, yeah, cause sure. In the nineties, the kids were doing like surfer stuff, like cowabunga and whatnot. Yeah. Like that made sense for back then. But if you're going to modernize it, you got to modernize it. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think they work. They are the perfect amount of redesigned. They look like the classic characters, but they have enough unique stuff that doesn't distract you. Right. Which I liked. Um, like, I think Donatello wears glasses, but they're not, like, super, like, they don't, yeah, they're, they're not weird overly They're not magnifying his eyeballs. Yeah. Yes. He has glasses. He has, like, a fanny pack strapped to him. Yeah. Like, headphones around his neck. But, like, just enough that you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, Donnie, or uh, I'm sorry, Raphael has like the skull cap bandana in this version. Yeah, which, which they've given him a lot yes, in a lot of more recent versions. He's had that a bunch versions. of versions. And yeah. that's fine. Like yeah. they, 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 but they look enough like the original version that mm. you don't look at them and go, that's not how the turtles look. Yeah. You know? No, they look the most like they, the turtles in a while, yeah. <laughs> actually. I guess the whole plot is that there is an evil company. Is it TCRI? I don't know if we ever learn if that's who it they is. are. It is. TCRI. It is. Mm-hmm. Uh, that wants this mutation stuff. Yeah, Cynthia Utron, okay. which is the Krang. Krang is an Utron. That's the race of brain people. I did not know that. Yes. So it, she it, is the weirdest looking character in the movie. By so, the way. so like ninety nine percent, if they do a sequel, yeah, she's got a Krang in her. She's a robot with a Krang. In oh, her. that'd be a cool. Because that's just what they. That's that's kind of what the Krang are. Wait, a lady Krang? Yeah. Uh, cancel the sequel. Cancel the sequel. <laughs> it might be a man in a yeah, yeah, female no. robot body, but yeah, yeah the Krang, no, that's, that's cool. That's what the Krang do. They I like, miss that. Have human suits. I miss that whole detail. Okay, thank God I did this episode with you. There you go. Um. Yeah, so she's one of the bad guys that's like, we need these mutants. She, like, sends yeah. goons to get the the ooze from yeah. Baxter, which starts the whole yes. creation. And then she's still after the turtles, mm-hmm. you know, once they're... And they I, like, I like that they have guns that can demutify things, yeah. which is pretty cool. Um, and then the other set of bad guys are Superfly, Superfly. played by Ice Cube. Who might have jumped up to being one of my favorite turtle villains in any of these movies. Uh, and him and his mutant crew are Bebop, Rocksteady, and then there's a bunch of other ones who are characters from things. Do you know their names? Sorry. Ray Filet. Ray Filet. Which one was he? He was the Stingray. Played okay. By Post Malone. He's always singing. Oh, gotcha. Ray Filet. Yeah. <laughs> um, Leatherhead, who is the alligator. I knew him. I kn- Gen- Gender swapped it to a woman because uh, okay. Seth Rogen is friends Wait. with an Aussie girl. Wait, what? Uh, just worst movie. The episode's done. They ruined Leatherhead. Uh, Kevin, my childhood is ru- ruined. <laughs> I, I knew Leatherhead was a character. I know nothing yeah. about them. But anyway. Uh, Leatherhead, who has had different versions that are yeah. like, sometimes he's just a really big like alligator. And other times he's like yeah. more of the rednecky, yeah. like hat, wearing a hat kind of version that this one was. Mm. Um, Scumbug, which is the really weird one that ends up with Splinter. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. And then there, I think there's a, no, uh, a Gecko. Who's Mondo pl- Gecko. He was played by Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Okay. The humans get to go. <laughs> Mondo Gecko is kind of a fun character. Um, and in, these in all different... are characters from something. Oh, yeah. They've been okay, in cool. cartoons. They've been I in I didn't toys. know if they like, threw in some new ones. So one of the funny things in the 2012 cartoon, that Nick Turtle yeah. show that I like, they don't have Michelangelo say Cowabunga in that series. Really? They have him say Booyaka Sha. <laughs> That's his catchphrase. <laughs> But when they meet Mondo Gecko, yeah. Mondo Gecko says Cowabunga to him. <laughs> and so one time in the series, he says Cowabunga, like, back to him. Oh, that's Which was cool. kind of a fun little, like, yeah, we get it. You changed it because trying to make it not be the original. Yeah, that's uh, fun. That's fun. So Mondo Gecko is always kind of a funny character mm. uh, in whatever version they put him in. Yeah. Um, okay, what was what I think was... there's somebody else, too. Yeah, there was. There was, like, a bunch of them. Yeah. Well, Bebop and Rocksteady are yeah. in it. John Cena and Seth Rogen. Yes. Play them, and th- they were 
pretty minimal in yeah. in like line. So you didn't really feel like you're listening to Seth Rogen a whole lot. Yeah. And like they usually like in the previous one they were like a big deal. Right. But this one they're like part of like a group. Yeah, it was a big ensemble of bands. Yes, guys. it was a huge ensemble. And like I said, Superfly is basically like a version of Baxter Stockman. They yeah, like and I think split the character. I think they probably originally planned him to cuz like mm. the the design of Baxter not to say that like like an afro kind of thing can't be multiple people but oh, like, yeah. they definitely seem to have the same hairstyle or he like modeled you know? himself yeah. off of he, Baxter he grew his hair like his dad but like I said uh, Superfly uh, freaking what's his face Ice Cube is so good at it's this. so good it's, yeah y'all yeah. some little tortoises huh I can't believe there are other mutants you wanna roll with us um but yeah though, so the whole theme of this is like I want to be part of society, but will they accept me? And like, there's a really good origin with Splinter, mm -hmm. which I like. So he's giving them the backstory, which they already know, but it's for the audience. I will tell you again. He's like, so yeah, I was a rat. I didn't have any friends. I had one friend and I ate him after he got killed. Uh, which that, my stepson's thought was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Like that scene, they just, that just hit their funny bone. It was perfect yes. kid humor. <laughs> And um, I do like where he's just like, yeah, so we all got mutated by the ooze. And it's like, I was an old rat. So I became an older rat man. And, but you were baby, so you stayed babies. And he goes, it makes perfect sense, sense if you think about it. <laughs> I'm like, it makes no goddamn <laughs> sense. Um, yeah, and I actually, <laughs> this again, getting into Splinter's origin, this has become the most, like, confusing one that makes no sense but it might be my favorite splinter i like that he just looks like a dad <laughs> he's got like the mustache and the weird afro thing yeah uh and, and he's wearing like a bathrobe it's not really like a gi <laughs> but it looks enough like well before the bathroom and in the flashback he's wearing like a t-shirt yeah. like touristy shirts yeah. uh, and he talks about the time where he tried to bring the turtles up and everyone got scared mm -hmm. and rejected them yes um so yeah, that's the thing. The turtles want to be a part of the human world, mm -hmm. much like the Little Mermaid. I'm surprised they didn't sing that song. Uh, and I like that Leonardo. Leonardo, I got it right that time. I just realized their names are there, so now I'm not going to mess go. it up. I like that he is the one who is like the responsible brother, but like the younger ones, the other ones are trying to get him to like have break out fun. of this. Have a little fun. And they're right to a degree. Yeah. Because Splinter definitely is way too... Strict, but what I like about this splitter is he he does kind of try to make up for it. He he makes them the human world, yeah. <laughs> which is he makes the den look like a restaurant, and he has cutouts of Christopher Pine and someone else, Chris and, Evans, and Chris Evans, and it's just three Chris's and yeah, uh, Chris is it Chris Hemsworth is the other one? I forget, I forget, but he has cutouts <laughs> of them. Um, now here the, I don't know if you heard the splinter controversy. What? Oh, because he because he dates Scumbug at the end. He dates Scumbug, but there was a misprint on one of the posters that said Scumbug was a dude. Mm. So everyone went. They gender swapped Scumbug. Yes. So because in the in the thing, it's a girl. Yes. Yeah. So but every, originally, Scumbug is a man. Yes. Yeah, so everyone decided that they made Splinter gay, and they all had meltdowns. And Splinter is voiced by Jackie Chan. I'm like, I like Jackie Chan, but he's kind of a puppet for the Chinese government. Do you think ever in a million years they would let him do that? Like, right. never. So, yeah, it was this whole thing that got blown out, and all these guys made videos complaining about it, and in the end, it's like, it's a misprint on the poster. Like, that was it. And, yeah, Jackie Chan, as much as you can say about him in real life, he does do a good job in this. He does a good splitter. job. I was really enjoying his character. <laughs> And yeah, even April's fine. Mm -hmm. April's fine. She's fine. I think she's fine. Um, yeah, so the whole story basically. The, the, you know. Her vomiting like crazy is a little bit much. I I gotta say. It's funny, but yeah, that, like that stuff makes me sick. So I get how it could be funny to someone. But for me, I'm like, I, I have to stop looking at it. Um, so basically, the mutants. The, the, so the, the scientists want to get the turtles and get their blood and everything. Which is very... Eric Sachs from 2013. Right. Like, but I mean, it is gonna, a good plot device. If you, oh, if yeah, you can't recreate the machine. serum and it's in their blood, why not do that? Right. We're going to put them in a machine, suck their blood out. Yes. I'm going to milk them. Oh yeah. There's a running gag where he's like, they're going to milk you. And they're like, we don't have nipples. That makes no sense. They're like, Oh no, we're actually getting milked. 
Um, I do because again, again with the splitter, he is a rat. Like he is very much a rat. Like yeah. unlike the turtles who were babies, he was a rat for a while before he got mutated. So he still thinks like that. Uh, oh, I forgot. They watch YouTube videos, and that's how he teaches them to be ninjas. I'm like, okay, right. now we're really they watch stretching. A bunch of kung fu movies. Yeah. Well, you know, at least YouTube has like an unlimited yeah. supply of videos, and you can learn how to do not just a book, almost <laughs> anything from YouTube. Like, yeah. you can fix your water heater by watching YouTube. So, I think it's more plausible than a rat finding a book and then yeah. figuring out how to do kung fu like but they both still got asian accents they both still got asian accents. <laughs> it wasn't even like they lived in chinatown or something like no, where did yes. you get this accent that would have fixed it <laughs> or like he was a rat in chinatown Came or something over on like a boat that. something yeah yeah um so yeah uh the scientists want to milk them for their blood uh but at the same time the mutants want to make some kind of device to turn everyone into mutants and right. kill people they want to oh they want to turn like all the animals into mutants mm -hmm. and, then and then kill all the, the humans. Yeah. And most of the mutants are in on this plan, but the turtles are like, "Could you not do that? Like, could you not, please?" Cuz we met one and she was kind of cool. Yeah, cuz we met one. It's like, "Hey turtles, you should meet more people. <laughs> should we really meet more people? Go to more go to more social gatherings." You're like, "Oh god." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do like the dynamic. There's a scene where the turtles are like impressed yeah. by Superfly because he's so darn cool. Yeah. And they like hang out with them. I like that they hang out and try to find scene. common ground. It yeah. isn't until you find out about the world ending thing. Right. They're, they're like, like uh -oh. oh, like they're really getting into yeah. the idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is one of the funniest parts of that movie. Just, yeah. like, just that whole like, little dynamic. They're all out having a good time. Yeah. The turtles feel the closest to what they want of like fitting in and yeah. being out in like the real world. Because and, before this, they talked about how like they can't wait to be in high school. It's right. the most magical thing in the world, but they will never be accepted. Um, but yeah, then it turns in, it literally becomes mutant mayhem Yeah, because even his guys aren't really on the, on his side toward the end. And then like <laughs> Superfly gets so mutated. He turns into the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Uh, it's, it's really funny that like they, they, there's this mutation machine. Uh, and he falls into the water with it, so he gets mixed with a whale. Like a whole bunch of stuff. Though. A whole yeah. bunch of... Wait, 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 wait. But this, this part, I laughed out loud, where they're like, okay, this shouldn't be a problem. And then when he gets to dry land, he falls into a zoo. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, this is a problem. And I like his, his mustache is like a giraffe neck. Um, yeah, so they got to figure out how to stop him. It's like a fun sequence. Um... They are making a figure of yeah. the giant. I don't remember they? what it's called, but they held it back, which I thought was so smart. It didn't they, come out with the original uh, toys to spoil did it. Did he call himself Super Duper Fly? I think uh, I don't remember what it is. Mega Mega Fly, Super Fly. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, they yeah. they are making a bigger like jumbo figure of that mm -hmm. ridiculous thing he turns into. Yeah, and then again, April's got something to do in this. She's got to overcome her fear of being on camera. Yep. But also, she's got to let the people know, like, hey, there are mutants out there, but there are some that are on our side that want to help us and turns into a love letter to New York, which turns, happens a lot in these kind of movies. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. If you've got to go through, if you're going to get him, you, you got to go, go through, through me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you see everyone working together and whatnot and they stop it. But yeah, I, at the end, I know some people don't, they feel weird about the end. Okay. I guess spoilers. So all the mutants who are like bad guys, are now friends and they all live with Splinter and the Turtles. How do you feel? I didn't mind it in for this version. So, and also I'm not a purist, but how did you feel? Uh, mixed bag. A yeah. lot of those guys or half of those guys are good guys in the Turtle continuity. Yeah. Uh, like in the old cartoons and the old toy lines. So like that. So I don't mind it, but like Bebop and Rocksteady living with the Turtles seems a little bit weird. I mean, yeah. they can easily have them go work for Shredder once Shredder shows up if yeah. they want or something. Um, it definitely makes the sewer a little crowded. It does. Uh, it does. You know, to have all these guys living together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like Splinter gets a girlfriend who he's looking for, by the way. He's like, you know how many other rats are out there? There's not many. <laughs> um, I do. Wait, here's another question I had for the whole movie. What kind of cell plan are they on? They all have just regular cell phones. Like, did they steal the? I assume they stole them, but who's playing for the cell plan? Um, but yeah, there's that. And then the turtles actually get accepted by society 
I mean, I'm sure if they do a sequel, they'll show that not everyone is into them. But like, yeah, it ends with them like taking their ninja outfits off and actually going to school. Uh, and some people felt conflicted about that. But again, we're modernizing the turtles. Yep. These days, kids are more accepting. That's that's true. Yes. Kids are way more accepting than yeah. they were a generation ago. Yeah. And way more accepting than it, like. It, yes. Kids just are. And society in general are probably like. All right, yeah, sure, it's a turtle guy. I don't give a shit. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure if they do a sequel, there will be a bunch of people online complaining about it. And there there will be... There's ways you could actually explore... Honestly, I'm actually kind of happy they did that. Because we see in society how people, like, react to things. And it's going to be cool to see that through, like, a turtle, like, exaggerated lens. Where they're like, we love the turtles. Oh, we hate them. Mutants are cool. Oh, we, you do an X-Men thing yeah, at yeah. that point. Yeah. I enjoyed um, that they went and saw yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, I, I it was it was similar to them. Ooh, oh God! <laughs> similar to them going to the Knicks game. Like, yeah. I like that feeling that they're doing something in mm. New York. Like, yeah. they're part of a community, even though they're not letting anybody see them. Yes, they're and, taking advantage of this stuff. And of course, they're doing that classic New York thing: eating Pizza Hut pizza. Gotta eat pizza. Comes pizza. back, comes back in this one. I noticed it. I'm like, you did it again, didn't you? <laughs> it was Domino's in the 1991, though. Uh, Oh, the nice. Never pay full price for late pizza guy. That's the right. Delivery that's right. Guy. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good. I'm, I'm glad that turtle fans are liking it. I think it's doing well. Yeah, it's it seems to be. Well. I mean, it's the Barbie movie is, you know, kind of crushing yeah. everything, <laughs> but I think it's, I think they're going to, Oh, by, by the way, by the way, this is the last uh, or second to last episode coming out during Boys Month here at Hack the Movies. Oh, I didn't even know it was Boys Month. So I should have dressed more manly. Then. I know. Like, I cut my sleeves off. Kevin, and... I made I made a huge mistake by saying I like the Barbie movie. In the comment section, let me know. Mm. So I decided I kicked all the girls off off the channel. Excellent. This month. I didn't just accidentally schedule all male episodes and now I'm playing it up as a bit. I did it on purpose. Why aren't we drinking brewski beers? I, oh, I, well, is, I am drinking a seltzer. That's not all super right. manly. Um, Here, I've got my Diet Coke. Yeah. We are men. <laughs> but yeah, Kevin, I, I know in that episode I said I really enjoyed Barbie, but now I hate it. Right. Boo, Barbie. I, it should make negative a billion dollars. Please resubscribe if you unsubscribe after the Barbie episode. So even though this won't necessarily yeah. be like the highest grossing movie yeah. or whatever, I think it's doing well enough that they're going to probably, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure they've already greenlit the sequel. Yeah. So. And they, I'm, again, I'm glad that they kind of like what Batman did when it rebooted. Like, let's, let's save Joker for later. Yeah. And they're like, all right, bring in the shredder at the end. It's not a bad idea to save a good, I mean, sometimes they, they, screw themselves and they save something really good for the second one and it never happens. And it never happens, yeah. But there have been so many reboots of the Turtles yeah. that we've seen the Turtles versus Shredder a bunch of times. Yeah. And I think it was smart to, to Even me, around. who loves the Shredder, it's my favorite one, even I'm like, you don't have to do Shredder right away. Right. Do some of these other things. It was actually kind of neat that they did a whole new bad guy. Superfly, yeah. even though he's similar to Baxter, was a new character. It had a very v different tone yeah. to it. I, I thought I thought it was a fun new addition. Yeah. To, to I like Turtles. that he knows everything. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, let me guess. 15 years ago, some ooze went down and made you guys. <laughs> and uh, I like the Turtle Kids. I, I really enjoy them. They felt organic uh, to me. Uh, I feel like they had chemistry, the voice actors, mm -hmm. off each other. And yeah, again, even April didn't bother me. I, I enjoyed right. it. Overall, it was a good, good, good time. Now, we talked about some good turtle movies. We talked about some bad turtle movies. Okay. Obviously, we think the first one is the best, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. I think without a shadow of a doubt. Cool. Cool. Out of the shadow of a doubt. Out of a shadow. Of a doubt. <laughs> now we're at the point where we talk about what is the worst Ninja Turtles movie. Kevin, what did you pick? It's a tough decision, I yeah. think. Because, like I said, most of them are somewhat decent. Most of them are somewhat decent, yep. and the ones that are bad are. Like, not 100% bad. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to pick the first Michael Bay Ninja Turtles as the worst one. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. I, I know, and I know why, yeah. For me, that one, it's because the script was a hack job. Yeah, I, I think that really, really hurt it. Which which is even worse, because like it could have been a really decent movie. Yes, it, it could have been a good yeah. start. It was point. almost there. It was almost there. Um, I get why you would say that. I understand. And I don't have any nostalgia to help soften that for me. Yes. Yes. So that's the other, you know, factor to there. 
I feel like people are going to hate me for this, but they really shouldn't. I'm going to. Really? Secret of the I'm East? going to. I know, I know, I know. But for me, like, when it comes to, like, three, the damage had already been done. Okay. And even then, three kind of backtracks because they get to use their weapons and stuff. Yeah. Uh, two is more disappointing because the first one was so good and it just, whereas out of the shadows, course corrects for the better, mm -hmm. two course corrects for the worse. Okay. And it just kind of like really damages that first, not really, because I could watch the first one in like a bubble and be fine. But yeah, it's taking things that I love from the first movie and just ruining it. Like no weapons, Shredder being useless. Mm -hmm. Uh, not a lot of cool fights, weird dancing and stuff. It uh, Splinter being useless. No Casey Jones at all. Even though I'm not the biggest Casey Jones guy, it would have been nice to have seen him. It's just such a step down from the first film that it, like, for me, that makes it even worse. As if it were right. just, like, another... Like, Ninja Turtles 3 is just another bad sequel. Okay. Michael Bay, for me, I'm like, it's just another bad reboot and a long line of bad reboots. But two, it's like, man... You had something really good, and you dropped the ball so bad. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm going. All to. right, three might be technically worse on the technical. Three level. is definitely technically worse. <laughs> but two uh, just hurts more, Kevin. I that's was I was between three and the first Bay, Bay Turtle movie as my yeah. worst ones. No, but I on a technical level, I, Bay just like I said because of the script and production issues, I could see why that would be the worst one. Yeah. Because uh, you see what the sequel's like where they didn't have those same issues and it was a lot better. Right. Uh, but yes, that was our What is the Worst Ninja Turtles movie. Do you guys agree? Also, I feel like everyone picks three, so it's nice to have some variety. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of why I didn't go with three. <laughs> and three is not terrible. I just don't think it's an interesting. Okay, okay. What's your favorite after the first one? Uh... That's actually pretty hard. That one's actually, yeah. It, that it, should be the episode. What is the second best Ninja Turtles movie? If I keep my, like, nostalgia lens on, for me, it is Secret of the Ooze. Okay. But if I if I remove that, it's it might be the animated TMNT movie. I think that's my second favorite. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, Out of the Shadows is almost up there. Mutant Mayhem, too, but Out of the Shadows is more of what I think of when I think of the Turtles, other than what they look like. Mutant yeah. Mayhem was so different, which I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. But if I want, like, classic turtle stuff, yeah, it's either Out of the Shadows or that one. I do love the first animated Ninja Turtles movie, TMNT. Mutant Mayhem's pretty good. I, I just yeah. feel like I can't rank it real well because I saw it once, and yeah. I, I haven't had enough time to digest it to go, like, yeah, mm. this really fits in. Yeah. But I, my biggest complaint about that movie is just everything's really ugly in it. <laughs> yeah. Like... Like Which, I mean, you're making a movie about mutants, so I get it. But, but even yeah, all no. the humans. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm like a gorgeous human being, but <laughs> but like Seth Rogen is kind of a troll, and he just made yeah. everybody as ugly as he is in the movie. I'm like, <laughs> okay, everybody's just kind of weird and lumpy. <laughs> but yes, that is our episode on Ninja Turtles. Kevin, where can we find you? So I have a show called Peg Warmers. What? Yes. <laughs> it's a video podcast type show on the internet similar to this. Sometimes we film it here. Oh. Uh, we just recently did a Stargate episode. We did. And we have a few more planned and or coming out soon. Uh, but I also shoot episodes with other guests or on my own. I do things like talking about toy shows that I go mm -hmm. to, toy news, recaps of toy lines, just all kinds of fun stuff like that. Yeah. And we got to do more episodes together. Me and Kevin are neighbors. Yeah. We're very close, so <laughs> for a while, every once in a while, I'll have Kevin just come here. We'll just do the episodes here. So yeah, we're, it's, we're we're so close now. It's like <laughs> I it's it's the most convenient yeah like setup ever for me to just come over here. Yeah, and film, what so. did we do recently? We did a uh, Batman and Batman Returns we did Batman and, and Batman Stargate, Returns, Stargate, and I think we shot one for Last Action Hero. Yeah, Last Action Hero is yeah. coming out in September sometime. I don't nice. I don't know when the release date will be, but that's our September episode. Nice. Um, and we've got we've got more planned, like the hack the movies. Mm. Peg Warmers episodes <laughs> are gonna continue. Um, it's yeah, it's. I gotta look at um, I gotta look at my my list of upcoming reviews and see what toys we have that we can like uh, match up with that. Speaking of September, pause. I'm gonna make sure I get the dates right. On September 16th and 17th at the Sheraton Bucks County Langhorn Hotel, I will be at PA HorrorCon. Oh, I got a hack the movies booth at PA HorrorCon. Crystal will be there. 
I think a bunch of us will be there because it's so goddamn close. Um, so come out to that. That will be a lot of fun. And then in October, October 6th to 8th, I'll be in Tampa, Florida for Spookala. It's okay. another horror convention. Uh, they got a lot of uh, guests there. That's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of big horror people there. Some characters from Scream, Halloween, the original Halloween. Christy Swanson, my Buffy will be there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, check us out at those conventions. And I don't know if you know this. God damn it, I left the poster in another room. I have posters available now, Kevin. Wow. The, the Tony Peaks poster. Nice. It's finally, you can get it in shirt form and poster form. And also, I don't know if you saw, I did the uh, Hack the Movies Batman 89 uh, design. Oh, did yeah. Did you see okay. that? So it looks like the Batman 89, but it's the Hack the Movies H. Okay. Uh, my artist, Nick Code, made that for me. I'm selling that now as a poster. Excellent. Uh, Get so the Hack the Movies merch. Go to hackthemovies.com and then go to the store. Or check out the RetroWare store. Go to their collections. There's a Hack the Movies collection. You can check out all of that. And uh, yeah, please become a patron. I've been doing a lot of good stuff on Patreon lately. Uh, not all the time. Once in a while, I get a monkey wrench thrown in my plans. But a lot during the summer, I've been getting episodes out early on Patreon. That's fantastic. Getting out like a week early. Hey, here you go. Here you go. And they will be out earlier. Because like I said, I have a lot of conventions coming up. So I got to make sure they get out earlier. Uh, so yeah, join all of that. Subscribe to Peg Warmers. I'm going to be back on there soon. And uh, yeah, it's it's turtle time. Is that a thing? Cowabunga. <laughs> Radical. Bossa Nova. I love being a turtle. There's no way for their neck to fit in there. But anyway, all right, yeah. goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.